Yeah, that's it was yellow that here was yesterday just too. One night it was like that, yeah. Yeah. What was it? Why why was it yellow? Was it a harvest moon? Um guys, this might be going live in a minute. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. now it is live. I've just got a notification. <laughs> welcome, welcome. I don't know how I Thanks. did that, but <laughs> You see, Ron, you're a multi-talented man. That's 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 mm. impressive. In that, or you got good friends. So no, Adam, it was yellow on yeah, Friday, cheers, James. You got me, yeah. but it was raining last night, so I don't know. Um, I don't. I, I didn't catch catch the moon last night. But um, yeah, Sirius was um, yeah, like reds and greens and blues in it, I think. And did you see that little photo? It looked like a. I don't, know, I don't even know how that happened. It's it's yeah. interesting. Uh, I don't. We've got lots more testing to do, but you're getting some really good results now. You see, you've struck gold. Uh, Absolutely, some, you're getting some really good shots. So it's clearly my my only concern is if you've got twenty times less zoom, whatever it is, and we're getting similar size shots, it could be an out of focus issue, but. I think we need some lenses, don't we? Is the next thing to, to look at is putting a lens on it. They're pretty expensive lenses. Well, I've had a little look. So they range from like 200 quid to like eBay saying same sort of thing, doing for like seven or eight quid. So I'm going to take an eight quid punt, I think, and just sit to see what happens. Mm. Um, and just and just see what the, we we get from there. But I don't I don't know. I've tried taking shots of street lights. I'm not can't remember who it was. Was it you, James, that suggested it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and well, because not... it has this similar local light source, right? Kind of like the uh, the bendy lights that you can focus. Yeah. So I've been trying to see if I can get a similar effect, and it's, it's no, I can't. Is the simple answer. Um, I'm getting some effect, but not anything like it. And the camera is instantly not wanting to create that effect. Whereas my camera is wanting to create that effect. Rob was struggling to get that close up kind of circular, so called out of focus pattern. But my to be able to video it, but I can't, I can't take a photo yeah. of it. It won't, yeah, I need to know the settings. I need lots of practice with what settings and. Whereas my, my, mine's happy to do it. So is that is that something? Is it the, the increased zooms happier to do it? Especially when are, you, goes, are you in a really, really dark night as well? Is it really, really dark for you? Because maybe the moonlight is making it, it's drawing in the moonlight. I, I, I'm not sure if that's right, but maybe I need a moonless night to do it. Well, yeah, it was the next, next week or so I'm going to. I'll keep doing it. Do you know what I mean? And, and we'll see, won't we? We'll see what results we can. Mm, I won't be doing it for the, for a little while. It's been overcast now. And we're, I think we've been forecast rain for quite a while now. This is our rainy season now. So. Um, mm. Mm. So, John, yeah. tell us about what you have had going on this week. Some pretty exciting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but yes. <laughs> um, Not I, really. I had to test the friction bearing in my gyroscope and turns out it works works perfectly so therefore the first the first experiment the six hour rotation of the earth experiment uh, still stands as valid for the peanut fantastic da, 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 da. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> yeah we're going to get some better um, better video footage of it but uh yeah i was just bowled over that it actually worked and because despite being told by the manufacturer or the owner of the company that manufactures the gyroscope that it wasn't capable of registering the 15 degrees per hour rotation of the earth um yeah i was very surprised to find that it absolutely was <clears throat> so yeah that video is available and I guess you quickly forgave the, the poor chap because they obviously don't know any better 
Well, it's funny, he's, he's yep. actually writing a book on, on Foucault's Pendulum, which um, he probably doesn't want to read my blog then. I don't know what other people's thoughts on Foucault's Pendulum experiment are. Anyone looked into I, it? I thought that was very mean homework. <laughs> so it was, I thought it was a, it was a, an interesting uh, challenge because you were chatting about it last night when we were on Twitter and mm. and, and uh, I managed to cram a little bit in, you know, with regards to the sign weight. Mm. Yeah, the, well, it's the it's the formula for uh, dependent on your latitude. The sine wave is no. It's, it's a formula. It's it's the sine of your latitude times fifteen degrees per hour, and that will give you the variation of rotation. Or um, also, it's claimed to show gyroscope apparent drift calculation. Mm. It, it, with the same formula, but um, I'm starting to think it's it's completely bogus. Well, right. I assume when you were asking about that, that you were intimating the sine wave might have something to do with it. So I had a little look, and the, and the only thing I could see that the reason that it's got sine wave in was in somebody explaining the actual formula, and the the reason it's got signing is because the way the maths is about explaining what's going off, isn't it, mathematically? And there are lots of ways of doing that. And what they, the way they do this within that formula, and hence why signs in there, is to use vectors to calculate the movement because it's within 3D space. So you can have an X, a Y, and a Z movement. So right. that's the reason it's in there, and that's the right. only reason. There's no reason that the movement replicates a sine wave or anything that I could see. Mm. It was just simply you you could you could do a different formula that didn't have it in, but it would be a lot bigger and more <laughs> complicated because moving in three D space is hard to express mathematically unless you use vectors. So that was that's interesting. Correct. And for all the layman people like I was, and it still am, um, you can look up Foucault's Pendulum and Aries. Uh, what's his name again? Professor Airy, and then you'll get a better idea well, of everything. About Airy, there was an interest. I mean, I, I was <clears throat> um, already had my doubts about uh, the formula, of it, but I, I saw it being used more and more. Um, in with regard to gyroscopes and as far as i knew it it, it only really um applies to um the pendulum but aries when he was the seventh astronomer royal or royal um which doesn't mean a lot in our circumstances or our, our circles but it was interesting that he he said well he um he regarded the latitude-dependent formula for the period of the apparent precession of the pendulum as a, quote, mathematical curiosity having no application whatsoever to the... Now, he, he used um, an expression, um, soi dissent, which is, I think it's Latin, but basically for so-called experiment. So he said... It, it was a mathematical curiosity having no application mm. whatsoever to the so-called experiment. So he, he didn't think much about it, that's for sure. And I, I tend mm. to think he's right. Um, because apart from the fact that I've proved to myself now that apparent drift is is um, not existent. Um, so these formulas basically are are redundant. Because there is the fifteen no drift. The fifteen degrees that just cancels itself out. Something like that. <laughs> um, the, sorry, carry on, Adam. I was going to say that the thing about before you know, Foucault's pendulum is one of the first things you go to mm. when you're about to prove that the Earth is a globe when you first look into flat Earth. 
isn't it? It's one of the mm. first things that, that yeah, pop up. And you, know, you, mm. so, you know, I remember looking into it and even and discussing it with friends. And it's before you even, you, you know, you look at some of the basic facts and even at the South Pole, I think I remember looking at one in a, a stairwell. So they've got the height of one of these things swinging in a stairwell at the South Pole. And even yeah. that didn't even get, doesn't even get close. And then you look into it the, the, down the line when you when it comes up again, and then you start to look at the actual mechanics of the thing, and then it becomes just farcical, doesn't it, in terms of, <laughs> A, how something could be neutral in what you're asking it to do, especially as Foucault never describes in any way any particular non-friction bearing. In any, do you know what I mean, at the top of that? which, yeah. And then, you know... So and then and then and most importantly, and this this was the you know one of the f- better things that I started me linking this with with deception theory. And that is, there is when you see all these machines that are set up mechanically to demonstrate Foucault's pendulum, and they set up a Foucault's pendulum that has to have a me- mechanism. To demonstrate the principle of Foucault's pendulum, mm, that's which right. Is and then they write little switch. Lengthy, ar- lengthy articles justifying why, and uh, justifying how good, and 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 why they they can rationalise putting a motor in there to drive this yeah. thing. <laughs> we take for the forest for, <laughs> for this the one time it doesn't work and doesn't demonstrate it to be disappointed. So we stuck the clock in. It. And I think Rob Durham's uh, video recently with his suspended gyroscope uh, hanging from a thread, his analysis of um, the the replica of Falcourt's uh, gyroscope set up from 1852 showed a clear um, adjustment screw right where the the um, hanging thread would be so as rob showed in his experiment you know this thing will turn no matter what if it's hung by a thread it has a turn to it and you can make that turn clockwise anti-clockwise speed up slow down everything um and so that again like you say adam fits into the deception model uh, why would they need uh, you know restrictive screws um, to slow this thing down, essentially, or speed this thing up. It all screams of fraud. Yeah, it stinks. Mm -hmm. As does all science lately. (laughs) I started to read a peer-reviewed paper on why the galaxy is 4.5 billion years old, and it's laughable, gents. I could barely get through the first four pages because everything's a theory, even even the great impact. Like, it's just, it's bollocks. No, mate, it's not. It's not. It's, 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 it is what it is because the maths requires it to be that at the moment. If something changes, it could be older or newer. But at the moment, the maths requires it to be that old. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's, mm. it's, it's, isn't it it's not a good. sort of 500 year um, domino effect of telling one lie? That turned that's now turned into God knows how many thousands of lives that they just have to keep covering up. It's true. Think about it in terms of society. Mm. You see why the world's so bad, right? We've got five, six generations of people that have lived bad, and now our generation's reaping the benefits of that. fruitful living you know the television the the violence the lack of care that the, the, we're paying for it because of the generations before us started to fall away from what they knew was good living you know and then the tv came in and wonderful <laughs> but a lot of it does stem from the you know when they when they flip the world from a, a flat stationary plane to a, a spinning careering hurtling ball in space in endless vacuum of space um you know a, a lot psychologically changed in in the human psyche on that front i think 
intentionally. You know what I mean? That was. But my my quandary or my conundrum was that the question was um, going back to the gyroscope, um, you know, and this and this formula, which basically says, you know, if you're on the <clears throat> in the North Pole, you're going to turn 360 degrees in 24 hours. Uh, exactly, but if you are in Paris, then you have to factor in the latitude of I think it's 54 degrees or 50 degrees or whatever it is, um, and you, you you take the sine of the latitude that you're at and you times it by 15 degrees per 24 hour, uh, per hour of rotation, and and that's your new rotation. So say in London it's 11 degrees or whatever. Uh, rather than 15 degrees per hour and I just wonder my question is is where do those degrees that you're not turning when does it add up to 360 degrees because as far as I'm concerned every no, that's single the... thing on the planet can turn does turn <laughs> 360 yeah. degrees in 24 hours on a theoretical spinning ball I, I the can't only difference a single mean... thing that doesn't the only difference can be, John, is um, how fast you are actually turning, as or you're moving. But you know, that's, they say we're that's the velocity. a thousand, a thousand at the yeah, a thousand at the equator, mm. and you'll say you'll say where you are, you're travelling at six hundred. That's mm -hmm. the only difference. You still have to move the three sixty degrees in the twenty four hours, no matter where you are. Exactly, and that's this is where a lot of people get confused. Say you've got, um, you know, you take the wheel off your off your bike and you mount it to your bench and you spin it. Exactly, the guy sitting in the hub on the hub in the middle is going to turn 360 yes. degrees in 24 hours. The guy on the tire is also going to turn 360 degrees in 24 hours, but the guy on the tire is going to be going a hell of a lot faster than the guy on the hub. In velocity, this velocity is going to be a lot higher. But that's the only yeah, thing that's, that's changing. What, that's when what I was going to interrupt and say. That's his edge velocity. Yeah, is what that is. The rate of rotation, though, surely, is the same. Mm -hmm. Because if you take a point down, a straight line down, take I don't know Cairo and I don't know, Munich or whatever is is roughly a level or yeah. Yeah. If you, if you take that as the Earth rotates, the the amount of of circular movement yeah. is the same. However, Cairo will have tra traversed a larger circumference yeah. because it's on a, but so therefore it's moving faster. But the amount of degrees per second. Mm -hmm. Is or hour is exactly the same, isn't it? Yes, that's this is my point. So when they say that you you know you have these pendulums or you have gyros with the apparent drift, all the rest of it, and this can be worked out with the sine formula, Foucault sine formula. I'm calling BS on that because, like I say, I cannot think of a single object on the planet that on the alleged planet that is revolving less or more than 360 degrees in 24 hours so therefore everything is rotating at 15 degrees per hour everything my my kitchen table my car my house my country everything on their fictitious planet ball is turning mm. 360 degrees in 24 hours yeah but they're all moving different distances in that velocities. time, in space, in time and space, aren't they? Based mm -hmm. on where they are on the globe that's rotating. Yeah. But you still move them. The ironic yeah. thing is, is that the only thing that would appear not to be moving on this fictitious planet would be um, a gyroscope. <laughs> um, Mounted at the at the poles or on the equator uh, at the right configuration, they're the only things that would appear not to move. The only things I can think of that appear not to do an exact 360 24 hours a day are the pendulums. <laughs> they can do whatever the hell they want by the sounds of things. 
<laughs> they, have, they have engines and motors, though, John. And <laughs> in terms of what you were saying earlier, it's all relative, John. Everything moves relative. It, mm. It's all relative. If anything was moving at all, that is, which we've already shown, uh, we multiple people have already shown now that um, you know we're, we're not moving anywhere. This place does not move. It's stationary. But the good thing is, is now we, we can actually show that with simple layman's physics experiments with the gyroscope. Um, and we can also show that the gyroscope is perfectly capable of measuring the rate of turn that they claim the Earth is, is, is spinning at. So as far as I'm concerned, it's checkmate on that front. Have, have we got a better way to, to let people understand it, though? Because I still fear, yeah. and I'm still, I mean, a subject to it once in a while when you guys get really complicated on it, how the gyroscope works and how it is an absolute slam dunk. Yeah, this uh, is what we need to Chuck, to people, on. maybe, you know, the newer people, if they could just understand it, I think it would go over well, a gyroscope the, is, the ultimate. is unique in in properties in in or, you know on the earth as far as i know a gyroscope when when it is i mean a gyroscope essentially is a spinning mass around an axis which is the spin axis so a gyroscope when spun up is unique in its properties that it remains rigid rigid in space it points at the point where is being aimed at as you spin it up. You see, this is the problem with the gyroscope thing. It's not easy to explain, but it's one of the most simplest things that you can understand um, just by watching a couple of videos and seeing how these things perform. Basically, uh, you know, like a, a magnetic compass would point at north as you went around the ball or the plane or whatever it would point at north um, th the difference with a gyroscope is that it will point at whatever it's pointing at when you fire it up and it will remain pointing at that so they call that rigidity in space which is a li little bit misleading because well you have to believe in space for a start but <laughs> Um, you know, it's it's pointing at an infinite point off in off in space. There you go. I say it. Um, sounds sounds more like resistance in space because it's it's uh, not subject to the imaginary stuff they say, right? No, it's not subject to to gravity. You know, gravity the way they describe. It, yes, if you drop a gyroscope, it's going to fall to the ground. But that is not gravity. That's density. And it's mm. subject to that, and that's why it starts to process and starts to wobble as it goes, as it moves away from its center of density. Um, that that's yeah, that that's very easy to to show that gravity has has no bearing. I mean, why would they u claim to use gyroscopes in outer space, in zero g environments on? satellites probes the iss has got several gyroscopes so they tell us you know if gravity was a was a factor then you wouldn't be able to use them in in zero g and and they do all the time so we're told um that's why john i like i don't like rigid in space no i don't i like stuck in the ether it sounds uncomfortable too. If you say it again, it's not a very nice phrase. <laughs> how can you be I don't rigid know how in to space? better describe it? I don't know. You know, it's other than it's it it remains pointing at an infinite an locked. infinite target. It's locked. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Locked. Ha! It, it, no, it literally saying. does lock itself when you fire yep. it up. You point it at something, and it locks on that. So if you fired it up. Let's say you're on. Let's say you're looking at the ball Earth in front of you, and on the right-hand side, you fired it up. Say you're on the equator or whatever, and the the rotor uh, axis is is parallel to the ground. Um, 
by the time it got round to the other side of the planet, three, you know, 180 degrees away or 12 hours away, the the, the ends would have flipped. Uh, you can't describe it like that. On a, the only ways to do it visually, it's, um, this is what I'm trying to do. This is what I'm trying to um, mm. to you know video to make it a little bit more easy. Uh, for people to see it, but there's plenty of videos online that show um, the actions of a of a gyroscope. I don't know if anyone's there. We we need to, to we need to work on a better way to translate it to the masses, though. Unfortunately, mm. but we're going to work on that. And we have a guy who's actually working on your latest video to get it um, up soon, so we can release it and show what you've done. But mm. um, we got to keep kicking it around for the layman's. <laughs> Yeah, I, think, let me run yeah, this. I think the point, the point is, guys, though, yeah, we've got to put it simply for everybody to understand, but the point is John has proved scientifically, without any doubt, as far as I can see, that, you know, this, that, and only for, more fundamentally, that the equipment is sensitive enough to pick up the alleged rotation. And that's what John proved from a scientific point of view. Hasn't proved the Earth doesn't doesn't rotate from a solely scientific point of view, but he certainly proved oh, the wow. equipment, if the Earth did rotate at that rate, would be would be sensitive enough to pick it up. What inference you draw from that statement of fact that the equipment is sensitive enough but doesn't demonstrate any rotation. What you draw from that is... Well, know, the, the only thing we, we can go on is what they tell us, and they tell us it rotates at 15 degrees per hour. <laughs> so all yeah, but you, you you're showing no rotation. Say again? You're, you're demonstrating no rotation, not rotating at 360 degrees a week or, or anything. It's sure zero. It's and zero drift, no drift, no parent drift, no nothing. Well, I, I suppose what I'm ro what I'm demonstrating is no rotation less than fifteen degrees per hour. If we want to get yeah. absolutely technical, well, I think that for the for the shill minded folks out there, that's that's important. That you know, well, we're not claiming we've, we've been to the moon and back. That yeah, actually what you're making important. is a statement of fact that is not arguable scientifically. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you, Adam. Um, you, we've brilliant, got to be, brilliant, We've Adam. got to be careful on this because it may be rotating at one degree per hour. And, and it may be <laughs> the fact that the gyroscope can't pick that up. But if that is the case, then every single thing they told us about the cosmology that we live in is wrong Bullshit. yeah exactly so yeah that's that's the point there yeah i totally agree with you i I've, what i've proved is that it's not rotating um less than 15 degrees, 15 per degrees hour. Per hour. Oh, sorry could slow the clock you could slow, you could slow the clock down mm. or wait wait till put some knackered batteries in it so it don't run well, I mean, I can change the gearing. So oh, I've yeah. got a. I've also got. You know those gears. I I put a photo up of them earlier. I've also yeah. got a, a smaller gear, so I could actually run it at probably a quarter of the rate of the turn of the Earth apparent, um, and even test that. That's a really good point. Um, but what I was gonna say. Uh, and it's gone. <laughs> I carry on. He'll pull it back. <laughs> oh, there we go. For for the for anyone out there that's listening, that's not, you know, can't put into, uh, can't visualize fifteen degrees per hour of turn. If they think about their hour hand on their watch or their clock, their analog watch or clock, if you think how how fast that turns and halve that rate then that is what i tested the the gyroscope rotation rate at um just to put it into a bit of perspective beautiful beautiful thank you 
more good stuff to come and follow, I'm sure. Yeah, we're getting there, yeah. I'm just making notes now because that was a really good point about uh, that Adam made. Fifteen degrees per hour. If you can change, if you can change gearing, mate, then that that that's fantastic because you can actually. Oh yeah, like RC stuff. cars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can, good you idea. Can, you can calibrate the uh, gyroscope in terms of prove yep. that the rotation and the lack of movement is solely due to what's going off underneath, if you can demonstrate a straight line curve between a straight line in the correlation between the rotation and the and the degrees in terms of time. Sure. Because if you change the gear in mm -hmm. so that it's moving at half the speed, you should see half the degrees. And if you show that, sure. then that's pretty clear evidence that actually even less than fifteen degrees per hour it's it's accurate. Well I, I got Two, two cogs the same size, which is what I'm using. Actually, talk amongst yourselves. I'll, I'll put up some photos. Love that word, <laughs> cogs. It's just a great word. <laughs> How are you doing, Rob? Quiet today. I'm just listening. Uh, it's pouring down rain where I am, so yeah, I can hardly hear you as I'm out in the shed. You sound like you're on the ISS. <laughs> he's, he's, he's further he's away. What does it sound like I'm in um, NASA the headquarters? Yep. <laughs> mm, that's excellent. No, there's uh, there's a lot to it, and there's also a lot of truth in what we're doing. So it's been very exciting working with you guys so far. There's so much more ahead this year. I think, um, well, John touched on it a couple of weeks ago. We've now had two or three years into it, and this this isn't going away. So we're starting to get, you know, the real big wigs and heavyweights involved, and they're starting to test it and, um, you know, go through it themselves. Pilots, real pilots, you know, military men, engineers, chemists, mathematicians, all kinds of people that wouldn't uh, – touch it with a 10 foot pole in the past because of a uh, guilt shaming or tin hat, you know, um, point of views that people get. So no. Can you hey, um, I, I, just, I just like to say just quickly too, we've got, um, got a few people watching. So, um, if um, any of the people watching got a question, just um, put it on the chat and try and get to it. Cool. Can anyone see, the picture I've put up or not? Yep, the green gears. Right, you can see it, yeah? Cool. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Is that coming across on the live feed? Sorry, guys, I can hardly hear you. Doesn't seem to be. We'll always put it up in the editing after, but we'll figure out how to get it up live for you next time, John. Is there any comments? No, Anyone on comments? Um... Say? Any questions, Rob? Uh, can you read the chat? Yeah, I'm reading it. Mm. Um. I just also wanted to say back for, for the people that um, when John and Adam were talking full cox pendulum is to look at that airy uh, experiment because it's, it's quite interesting as well. And it deals with the topic that always seems to pop up with the flat earth and that is the waters, right? So I just thought I'd add that if people are wondering about the pendulum and the experiments, make sure to look at airy as well. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of videos. Sorry, Karen. Mm -hmm. I was going to say there's plenty of stuff out there to look at um, on, on YouTube and there yeah, plenty, plenty. Right, I've no idea okay. if live feed is seeing any of these pictures or anything like this, but um, I'm putting up pictures of my the latest thing with the gears and you can see, or maybe not, See so mm. in the background there. There's a smaller gear, 
which is about I'd say it's about a third of the size of the big gears so I reckon I could ratchet down the spin of that gyroscope platform by a third maybe and make it five degrees per hour of spin now that would be something impressive if if the gyroscope was still registering that that sort of spin do you reckon well, I do as long as we know it's a reduction and we can calculate what that reduction is mm. if it picks it up mate then you do it on the teeth don't you on the yeah. amount of teeth I'm sure there's exactly a video that we can watch and it will take Half an hour to work it out and calculate it. Do you know what I mean? There must be a gearing ratio for me. There is. Go to yeah, the R cool, RC yeah. sites. Have it. That's a, this makes sense to me actually because I was a big RC guy um, a couple of years ago, so I know about you know the gears and gearing down and the ratios, and it's kind of a neat way. I'll have to look at it and maybe pull out some of my stuff. If I had a gyroscope, I could do my own with the gears. I have a lot of spare parts. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was right into radio control cars and all the rest of it as well, so this is where I, I cut my teeth on all of that. I don't know what's happened to the live stream here. I don't know if it's working or not. It's not working from my end, but it might be out there. Anyone got an eye on the chat room? Anyone tell us if it's working? I am. Um, someone just commented that um, they can only see half the screen. Only Not see on half a screen. Yeah, I think that's the problem. <clears throat> Let me just try something here. Bear with us, folks. Bear with us. I'm back. Can you he, he, can you he hear me? Oh, cool. Got kicked out yep, there, guy. I can hear you. So why are you doing that, Rob? I was going to say that that was my only concern that whatever the quality of clock you got, whether it was a tick, and therefore it was a single motion that the the um, gyroscope could respond to with the Earth, which isn't replicating the Earth, and would be bigger as well on that small scale. But if you've got smooth turning gearing on it then there's no argument in terms of the mechanism that's replicating the rotation as long as it's smooth that makes sense so that again adam so one of the scientifically it's always good to look at an experiment and think of critical thought what's what what could be an error in the experiment that replicates what you think demonstrates something mm -hmm. but actually doesn't because of an error. So one of the things I was thinking was that the, the, the clock mechanism that you've got is a ticker, yeah, as in... It is. Yeah? Yeah, it's but with not this, sort of quartz or whatever they say. It's, um, it's a ticker. It's a smooth clock. motion. Well, I've got one in my kitchen clock that's smooth motion. So it doesn't... So the second hand... And all the hands that follow work off a gearing system. So there's, but it's not tick, tick, tick. So the second hand runs smooth. Right. Yeah. You can't you know see it. Does it? No, I've not took the back off. It's on the kitchen wall. But do you know, but you know what I mean. But you can see there's a clear difference in it. There's a ten or more. Why well, said it was worth it? I don't disagree. It's, it's, called, a, it's called a mechanism. It, it's, like, it's called a quartz mechanism or something, isn't it? You know, th this is why people pay for Rolexes because they don't tick, 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 tick. They, tick, 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 you know, but they are ticking, but they're ticking uh, ten times faster very, yeah. than, than a normal tick. Yeah. So there's no click. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't. What I'm meaning is your clock wasn't. Clicking once every minute was the, the is the was the point I was I don't getting. Know. Let's see at. if I can bring up the video. That'd be interesting, or at least fast forwarded version of the video. So okay, so so the movement from minute two 
to minute three occurred over a minute. It didn't occur at two minutes 59 to two minutes uh, to three. Did you get me? It wasn't just the one click of a cog. The actual motion that was applied to the, the hand that was turning it was applied through a gearing mechanism that applied that force more slowly. Right. Is yeah, that, no, I'm with you. Do you get me? That that's um, again not my field, but it's based on my kitchen clock. Like I say, that's got this mechanism there. The second hand doesn't tick like the second hand does on your, your watch. It it's a much smoother gearing motion that it sweeps around the clock every minute rather than ticks around. Got you. Yeah, so I was thinking about that now. That your your my 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 kitchen clock is going round once every minute, and it looks smooth. Yeah, through a mm -hmm. bit of gear in that is no bigger than a double A battery. Do you know what I mean? So, what you've got there should negate if it's set through lots of gear in, and the clock mechanism itself's got some gear in, unless it is ticking once every. And that was the only thing that I think could impede the results. It ticks. It ticks once every second. Right. So. So it's like a normal clock, but it's ticking once every second, and the hour hand is moving at half the speed of the of a normal hour hand. Yes, yeah. so, and that's what it's connected to. And so the gearing, so the tick that we see is on the second hand, as we'd see. And then that smooth motion, we never see a tick on the hour hand ever, do we? And your hour hand's going half the speed. Yeah, you can. I mean, if you look close enough at a kitchen clock or something or a reasonable mm. size clock, you can see the hour hand move every second. But it, it's, yeah, it's, it's minute. And it would be even half the speed again on this particular mechanism that I'm using. Yeah, yeah. But you know, the, you know what I'm doing? What I'm doing a rob. I'm doing a rob. Argue things like that. Yeah, that's the only. That's the only thing that I could think that is argumentable in in the 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 mechanism or the method that's been demonstrated. Well, and if you're saying that it's half the speed. Of a normal, normal clock, which it is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Then that that negates it again even further, isn't it? In terms of yeah, it makes it even. It's not like more. a knock. It's not like when you knock the gyroscope and it comes back. Do you know what I mean? No, no. It's there, and there's a very, very, very imperceptible change mm -hmm. every second. I mean, essentially, oh, I though, if you if you took it down to the micro level, then you would register. It would register a knock. It would be. A, it would be. The, well, the you same know what, John? Then, 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 as a retort, all I would say is, then your gyroscope should also notice that we're going sixty-six thousand miles in this direction and whatever in this direction and this around the you know the great oh, tractor. Yeah, yeah. So it also should also notice that as well. Which Absolutely. should be even more. So the fecker should be spinning, shouldn't it? At a stupid rate. No but gyroscope we'll spun up should ever be staying still on this heliocentric model. No gyroscope should ever appear still, as both you know me and Rob and, and many others have, have shown it to do. It would be almost impossible for us to rig it to the point where it stays still. Uh, and still be able to show manually, you know, us moving it and it working. Uh, you know, th there's just no way a gyroscope can stay still on the planet or appear. It, it, like I say, the only two places are the North Pole and the equator, um, both with the same setup but opposite setups. If, if mm. I'll try and explain this in a video, but one. At the equator, it would be um, a horizontal spin axis, and at the uh, sorry, at the pole, it would be a horizontal spin axis, and at the equator, it would be a um, yeah, but the other way around. Yeah. I, I need yeah. to explain it in a video because people get horizontal, people get um, 
rotor axis and I was gonna say axis. that's the gimbal isn't it not the exactly not the... yeah the, the the spin axis is the spin of the axle through the rotor so it's perpendicular to the rotor so it would work um, a vertical spin axis at the north pole the south pole or whatever and a horizontal spin axis at the equator um, but in reality they're all the same spin axis um, because you're me measuring the spin axis relative to the ground below you it, it's so it sounds complicated you know when I say it <laughs> but um, it's actually very simple I can't get this working at all I can't get this running can someone else share does anyone else have the ability to share screen not from the phone sorry <laughs> Yeah, me neither, John. No, okay. I'll stop that. Just trying to run the video in the background so people know what the hell we're talking about. But so, I think I've just thought of something else. It was it was a random thought though, as a, as a defence. But theoretically, if we are rotating which is what you're talking about measuring and there should also be measurable effects of our rotation around the sun mm -hmm. and the sun's rotation around the galactic center and because we are moving away from the point in space yeah and as long as there's a change in orientation along that plane that the <clears throat> the gyro is working that should also be detected and i don't well, I know the know. I know the universe is impossibly flat, but unless we were traveling, uh, it was lined up the same. Yeah, you've seen that well, cartoon where the sun is hurtling through space and all the planets are revolving yeah, that's what, around. That's what it. I'm saying. That, so that motion should also be perceptible within, and those speeds are much bigger. And if you're moving at even small angles off of that plane. At the sort of speeds when you're talking 66,000 miles an hour and 200, whatever, you know, all those silly numbers, mm. yeah, <clears throat> then the movement away from that plane, even at the small angle, would be would be perceptible on a, on the gyro. But you you don't even see an attempt at a defence or an explanation of that. And I'm sure astrophysicists, surely, that's something they could use to sure. detect our motion in the galaxy as we have a super gyro instead of a collider doing, I don't know, Mandela effects or whatever. I don't know, nonsense. No, I'm not, I'm not going there. That's nonsense. No. But, but, but do, do you know what I mean? But instead of wasting money on that, surely a super gyro would be able to detect these things if they're rigid in, and like I say, it's not space to me. To me, it's stuck in the ether is what it is. It stays in that ether and whatever it's doing at those speeds I think the ether keeps it rigid there. I don't have any more of a clue than that, but do you know what I mean? But that, that's the way I'd describe it rather than rigid in space. Because space yeah. means you can't be rigid because there's nothing there to keep you rigid because <laughs> it's space. Is, is anyone seeing that video now? Is that managing yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to run? Okay, yeah. Give me that's full 20 seconds. Just got to grab something. Just let that run in the background then if people can see it that's good because I can't see you guys anymore so so that was the basic setup <clears throat> sat on top of a 24-hour clock mechanism can you all hear, see that yeah it's all good no sound which is cool because yeah. yeah, it was all good sound off. You probably don't. <laughs> no that's what I mean there is no sound which yeah. is good 
because I remember the thinking, oh, great. That was the only thing. I still don't know what you said on that, that video. I watched the video, but I don't know what you said because it was... <laughs> that's all I heard. <laughs> Let me fast forward it. Um, well, look, this starts off at uh, 7 o'clock, basically. Um, I heard your wife come in a couple of times or something. but uh, no, that, was, that a... was on the other one. <laughs> no one comes in, in this place. Yeah. So that's cool. Is that actually... The... Uh, on, on a the separate bus. Bus. I know we're live, but I've rebuilt the man cave today. I've doubled its space. I've removed, <laughs> I've removed the little mini mezzanine floor that I had for my children when they were little, and, and turned it into two extra wide experimenting shelves, which yeah. I've yet to find experiments for. Nah. But build it, and they will come. I think I, I gave you some inspiration earlier. I believe. Yes, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so the idea was that the the under here there's a, a sort of there's three legs that is the bottom of the gimbal and on top with the, this this whole setup here is the gyroscope itself and the gyroscope is sat on top of a um, clock mechanism that rotates uh, 360 degrees in 24 hours. So basically what I was looking for was the legs of the gyroscope gimbal to move at 15 degrees per hour and the gyroscope itself to remain exactly where we pointed it, which is roughly 5 degrees, um, for the in entire time. Um, so there it is at, uh, what's that, quarter past seven. It's been going quarter of an hour. John. You can already see the leg moving a little bit. Yep, Adam. Can I interject a geek point there? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you set it up at five degrees. Now, my OCD would want that at zero. I didn't think it was going to work, mate. <laughs> is that why it was just, I didn't know whether it was just once it's set up, they're a bugger to move and you're happy to keep them once you've got them there or? No, there's two problems. I, I can move it as, as much as I want. That's no problem. I can set it up as, as well as I want. But what the camera shows and what I'm seeing with my eye is different. So do you see what I mean? Doesn't, so I've got yeah, to line yeah. it up yeah, 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 looking yeah. at the camera um, screen right, and then you look back at it and it, it doesn't look as though it's lined I up use... at all. I use I use the same methodology when patients have argued about me pouring their methadone. Yeah, you've got to make it. At the high level, it. yeah, and you're never going to get the, <laughs> the camera. Uh, so, that, but there we go. We've got half a, half an hour there, which is um, should be moving what seven and a half degrees. So then we'll move it on. We'll go from half seven to uh, what's that? Ten to eight. Right, you can see quite quite a big difference there between the legs of the gimbal and the actual gyroscope where the original mm. is pointing at five. So you can see the leg has moved um, probably now nearly 15 degrees. It's coming up for an hour, so that would be about right. So if we wang it on a bit further, so that's 10 to 8 there. And I had to move the watch out the way because I think the legs was going to hit it so that's 20 to 9 I think maybe um, and that's now pointing towards the 25 degree 30 degree mark um, whereas the gyroscope remains pointing at 5 degrees which is exactly what I was hoping for um, and then we'll shift that on again quarter to 9 yeah, moved around a bit more. Didn't you see at the end, Rob, where I knocked it on the floor? That was your your um your pyrotechnics diehard moment. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, you know, I was, I was riveted. I thought you might be. <laughs> I thought you might be. I I was I particularly like the way you turned it into a way of demonstrating the bearings underneath, which I thought was a smooth. A smooth intersection as you smacked at the moment. Yeah, but you can see, you see the way it turns nicely nice on the bottom. Nice segue there. <laughs> as though I meant to do it and spin it around and around. And 
So it, basically, <laughs> there you can see, you know, that's that that's the sort of freeze frame of, you know, we're looking at this is two hours on, so it started at five past seven. It's now five past nine. Uh, so I'd expect 30 degrees of travel and that's exactly what we're seeing um, in the gimbal legs and we're seeing no degrees of travel in the gimbal whatsoever, in the uh, gyro whatsoever so it's remained rigid in space and it's proved itself to be capable of registering at least 15 degrees per hour so there we go So what was the main comment against what you'd done there like you you said that there were a few people um bagging you out straight away so what was the main problem that they were coming up with for you well there's there's only there's only one basically that they they believe that this wire um you, you the entire experiment is invalid because it's being it's it's attached to a wire basically they they think this wire is rigid um, and it's holding the gyroscope in place. I don't know if I can fast forward to where I knock it ass over tit and see show you. Um, but that and and that is literally only coming from one person now. Before that, there was there were claims. That, I mean, there, there were several claims that it was a gyro. It was the friction coefficient of the bearing gyro bearing there you go look i'm playing with the wire now okay it doesn't look as though it i'm not doing much of a job there but <laughs> <laughs> i mean it, it's i can assure you it's not um i'm just showing you there that it's still how many views have you had on that now john how many what views, views. uh i just mm. had a look a minute ago it was 260 or something yeah, so you've had plenty of opportunity for people to um, rag you out. I'm, I'm surprised that we, was your was your wife the one that was um, moving everything around there because they're pretty feminine hands. I, I can see there. Yeah, right. They're your hands. They're like crafty to... hands. I, I, I can imagine you've got massive Homer Simpson sausage fingers, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. I'm 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 just thinking, right, John. I, I've been the worst show for you tonight. I, if that's the only criticism you've had, I've just applied more scientific criticism tonight then than the good. pile of crap you've been fending all week. No, that's good. And even no, but do you know what I mean? If that is genuinely it, then I can think the of worst better I've... things. <laughs> you know, I I, I I can imagine within you know a few weeks or so, people are going to say. This is uh, this has been negated because it was actually going the opposite direction to the Earth's spin, and therefore it, it showed <laughs> no turn. Which you do actually have to take into account because I'm trying to I'm trying to experiment on the spin of the Earth. I'm showing no spin of the Earth, but to someone who thinks that the Earth is spinning, then this could literally be uh, the anti uh, I've, I've so, perfectly so caught the anti-spin of the earth or something I, don't I humor it. them just send them a link to the first video where there's no fucking turntable underneath it and ask them to work it out themselves and until they do don't humor them well i mean the, the, the main I mean? response would... there was well you know they just want to eat it's clearly the the friction in the in the bearing i mean it's a bag of shit it's a cheap toy it's crap you're facing the wrong direction it's uh this that and the other i mean i've heard it all um mm. all, all the words i haven't seen any any evidence from them so i've done it myself and and shown them that the the bearing is is perfectly up to the job but i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna really run it home and and gear that thing down so it's turning mm something like five degrees per hour and see if it registers that too now and i'm also going to cut the wire and attach batteries to the motor so it's running independent without any wires but it's still well, going to be running can't you mount it so that it's central or 
Mind you, batteries is as good, isn't it? It, it stops an argument. Well, the only reason I ran it off... Um, well, I mean, it, that, that wire essentially leads to a battery compartment with four one-and-a-half-volt mm. batteries in it, but I rigged it up to a, a phone charger that puts out the same six volts or whatever because I wanted to run it for the initial six-hour experiment, which you can't do on four AA batteries. It, it runs itself out in about an hour. So that's the only reason I rigged it up so that it was uh, running off the mains. But but for this experiment, I only need to run it about an hour mm. to show 15 <laughs> degrees of, of turn. So If I, there was any torque from the wire pulling, because wires pull, stuff falls off, you know what I mean? Yeah. But if there was any torque from that, then you would you would see it applied on the gyro, wouldn't you? Because the torque tends to apply and then the gyro will correct. Well, look at it. Do you know what I mean? It's, turning it's it. static. The wire is moving as I'm turning it. I mean, it's it's you know, it's not some solid slab of of titanium or whatever. Now watch it as it falls. You know, this <laughs> it's a beautiful a segment, solid man. wire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need pyrotechnics there and, and dramatic music and blood. We need dun, lots of dun, blood. Dun, dun, <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> but yeah, great. And uh, I, <clears throat> my segue. <laughs> I meant to do that. Well, that was beautiful. That's what I'm saying, Matt. I thought, and there he goes. Just it's like one of these. Free energy videos. I'm just showing you. Look, there's no mechanism under here. There's no. There's no. There's no Debbie McGee under the desk. It's... Well, none of it is stuck. The, none of it is stuck. The, the, ma the magician plans his show. Yeah. Nothing in here. Nothing yeah. there. <laughs> Someone did note at some point here that I turn it and it turns with the bottom. But I mean, to be fair, I've just dropped this thing. So I don't, know, I don't know what, you know, I had it perfectly balanced well, before. Is, is the motor still running at this point? Uh, yeah. Well, let me right, know. so the whole yeah. thing's still trying to stay yeah, where it was running. initially. Yeah, it's still so running. So the force yeah. is it's, it's then applying down that shaft as it tries to correct as you've smashed it around is, mm. like I said, I'd turn the sound off, John, if I'm being honest. Yeah, uh, yeah. I didn't even watch it, mate. I don't know. I can't, you know. Have you watched it? <laughs> I only watched it in fast motion. I'm like, yeah. Well, that's why, hence, hence the ability to critique. And genuinely, I've watched it and I've tried to critique it scientifically. And I think I've done a better job than most of the shows. I think you have. I say yeah. by the signs of things, yeah. Well, and I, that's I've the thought... only. Is that because you're king of the shills, Adam, or what? Uh, you can, you, you had a globe out in your garage, mister, right? That's That was my big thought. I was, am I joining Rob? Am I going to become the, a glober, a closet glober for a couple of days? When, <laughs> when I do so, uh, do you know what I mean? But, but that was my, that was my only criticism I could see of it, mate. I mean, there you go, right John. There, mate. Yeah. John, we've had a re we've had a request from one of our listeners. Can you turn it up a little bit, brother? If you can, maybe <laughs> on your end, you're coming through a little quiet, I guess. Uh, what the uh, mm, the microphone? My, I think it might be just you because I'm hearing everyone else loud and clear. Are you hearing me, all right? Yeah, I am. Yes, yeah, same man. Oh my God! Yeah, you're talking about the, the video. Five degrees. They don't. They don't want to hear the nope. Nope. Can you hear that? You, you got us there, Kaz. Huh? <laughs> he was fibbing. It was a joke, guys. You got us, Kaz. You got your 15 seconds. <laughs> oh, Karen. <laughs> see in the chat. Is she? I can't see anything here because I'm presenting all sorts of. Stuff. But yeah, anyway, that was the um, that was essentially what the experiment was, which validates the first experiment. So I'm more than happy with that. And anyone can do it too. So you know, this isn't limited to me. I mean, that is an expensive gyroscope, and it took all my Christmas money last year, 
um, to get it and a, a lot of <coughs> back uh, hand twisting but anyone can can get this um, you know Rob Durham's got one and Bob's got one now and the, all sorts of experiments are being done with it so uh, there you go there's the challenge laid down prove it wrong now very good John very good cheers bye we're still waiting mm -hmm. for great stuff man great a, stuff a star long exposure star shot from Australia Rob what's happening with that I need to work out how to use my camera first. <laughs> I knew you were um, going to say that. Ever since I bought it, it's virtually rained here every day since I've bought the camera. And I get a. Yeah, so I haven't had a good clear night since I bought the camera. And before that was every night I could have used it any night. But yeah. Typical. So you you spoiled us. You got us used to the great stuff because in your first week you had uh, Vanishing Island. So we were all so hyped up. By the way, if anybody hasn't seen it, go to ironrealmedia.com and check out the floating islands Rob in Australia has found. Yeah, great stuff. <clears throat> I can't wait to see the differences in the um, cameras because Adam's also taking the star pick. So it's going to be nice when you get it up and run, Rob. Be sure to have lots of content. We're building up a nice cache yeah. of kit here, aren't we? I'll um I'll take the camera wherever I go. So if I see anything out there that you know it's quite easy just to pull up. Well that, that video that I did that was that was dead set. I was driving in the truck, pulled over mm -hmm. and filmed that you know, set up the tripod and obviously filled it it filmed it in a minute and then drove off. So that's mm -hmm. why the audio was a bit dodgy and well audio was, as in what I said. Because it was wrong. You get around though with your work, and it's just, it's awesome. It's great that you bring that thing with you everywhere. I can't wait till you go to that place. Where is it? 800 clicks away. You got to go there, dude. Yeah, you're dreaming, I think. Now, we we're talking earlier, John, a couple of days ago about, you know, Concurry is one of the flattest places on earth. Yeah. Have you seen that video? Yeah. And that, so that's west of me, but that's, that's a long way away. Good now. I'd have. I need. I need a partner in crime, so I'm going to do experiments like that. <laughs> I got nobody here. I'm in. Yeah, you and me I, though. Hey, I will gladly put out feelers, and we'll try and get you a partner in crime. That'd be a great thing to film. I yeah, will see. So where did Walt go and Josh? Where, where is everyone? Well, I think that today we should send a big happy birthday shout out to Walt. Um, oh, yeah. It's his birthday. It's big five -oh, isn't it? Happy birthday. Yeah, the big 5-0. -oh. No, no. Six -oh. <laughs> 75, I thought it was. Yeah, no, 75. We look 75. <laughs> <laughs> I was assured last night was fifty, so I think I think he's being baited by Rob. <laughs> yeah, we got to give him a fair shake. It's a big five zero, and he actually made it to the five zero. So good for him. Uh, I good think he was trying to act like Axel Rose too, wasn't he? Going out something. <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude actual, what man. are y'all saying, dude? He was killing it. You guys have no. Actually, he wasn't him. acting too much like um, Axel. Just um, the singing part of it, I hope he was sticking to. <laughs> oh, you don't like Axel Rose? Typical Aussie. Well, I think what Axel gets up to behind closed doors is a bit wild, I think. I wouldn't know, mate. You've been there? <laughs> what exactly do you get up to behind closed doors there in Australia? <laughs> Sleeping. Uh, yeah. Watching TV. What about you? I don't know. That sounds like code, my friend. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so have we got anyone watching the live stream at the moment or what? Any questions coming in? <laughs> have you not even had a shell attack, John? When? Where? On the on the live feed, is there not even a 
Uh, no, we've got four I people watching. Two with mute. Uh, yeah, we've got a few in the chat room. It's Kaz, Karen. I can't keep up with the chat room as well. Yeah, that was the that was that fellow who said hello to you, John. Was Kaz? That's yeah, a female, I think. Mm. <laughs> so, any questions? Karen, any questions for John, our star for the moment? Yeah. So, I've got a topic for anyone. Other, other topics, did you say? Yeah. Shoot. Right, so all this flat earth stuff is taking us away from all the important things that are happening in the matrix. What is flat earth doing to help these causes? What are we actually achieving here? Why aren't we talking about false flags and pizza gates and crazy royals murdering people and <clears throat> all that sort of thing? How the hell is flat earth achieving anything? Anyone? Per more personal experience? Things. More interesting. Go ahead. That's, that's why I like it. It's more interesting. Well, um, yeah. yeah. It is, and, and, and it's more deeper. It's deeper. In what way? Well, think... you want to... We know so little about it. I mean, we know that it's not moving like they say. We're trying to come up with concrete ideas and testable re results, which there are many, but um, it's such a rush. Like it's such a, you know, you know, it's absolute truth. So you're going to dedicate your time to it. At least I am. Um, because personally, I've looked at t for 10 years at the other stuff at the false flags and the 9-11 uh, and, you know, all those governmental MSM tactics that are just so dry and stale and, you know we want to figure this one out we want we want to do this one for me and that's the draw for me get man. you anywhere did it, i mean the 9-11 investigations and all that sort of thing i mean it, it's got us along the path hasn't it it's got us further along in understanding what's what's going on but um well, sorry karen i was gonna say here's the here's the thing those side things and those like mandela false flags uh, government conspiracies, economic systems, the banking cartels, the, um, you know, the elite families, all of those things and all of that knowledge is um, available to help you on the road to get to the realization of flat earth. Yeah, it's a it's a big, 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 big earth shattering thing. And it is like so hard to get through to people. So but those side conspiracies, at least one of them, I mean, look at uh, Truth Seeker. You need one to get your mind to a place where you can start to smash out those walls because you have to do it yourself mentally and you have to do it with a big heavy hammer. And unless you get a trigger point, you're not going to see it. So then you're wasting your time. But no, anyways, that's my thoughts. On. No, I think you're spot on, James. Carry on, I think. One of you been following the, the Fort Lauder Lauderdale um, airport shooting? Say again, Rob. Oh. The Fort Lauderdale airport shooting. Have you been following that false flag or, mm. or hoax? Mm. No, that's uh, another no, bad it, one. They've made that one. They've made that one badly again. They've used the same crisis actor a couple of times. They've they've got um. Can you give us a footage of what, what was it about? <clears throat> what happened? Well, just a lone gunman running through the airport, shot and killed five and injured a few. And they've had you know you got the footage of um, the tarmac. Uh, people running away, but before they start running away, you can see, you can clearly see people are directing them, <laughs> directing them to run this way, and directing them to run that way, and, and stopping them um, while they're running away, stopping them, getting them to come back, getting them to hide. Getting, yeah, it's, yeah, the, uh, and they're, um, they, mm, they, poor, poor they have the good ones, and, yeah, they have the good ones, and they have their bad ones. Like they, some they do well, but some they really, really balled it up. And, Is, uh, isn't that an army base, Rob? Um, I think there might be one there, but I think 
that's the airport in Hollywood, I think. Is that right? Yeah, it's, yeah, that's right. That's just the airport in Fort Lauderdale. I've uh, flown there many times myself, and it was just um, it's the volume. And I just want to say on it, there was a lot of detractors. I mean, you start to see a little bit of division in the community. Um, but I'll say this to people that know is um, there's no way that they could have mistakenly interviewed that girl twice. And she just happened to wear a vest at the beginning and they came back later in the afternoon because just the sheer amount of people there, there's no way they would have interviewed her twice. There's so many other people. It just wouldn't have happened. So did you, think- did you uh, catch that Rob? Yeah, I did. did. And did you see the, like the, the film crew, there was like three film crews in the airport watching people run away. Now, the if 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 it was a real event, wouldn't the cameraman be running away as well? And there just happened to be three guys in the airport with, with proper cameras watching them run away. Is that a movie? Are they shooting a movie? No, no, no. They look like, they look like news crews to me. But um, hmm. that sort of, yeah, it's just one after the other. Yeah, and the setup reminded me of the one we had where the ambassador was shot. Remember that one? Where the they, oh, that was a that was, a yeah, that was an for that one. Well, this one's bad too. I mean, it, it's it's really bad. It's bad. I just, I just can't be bothered watching it anymore. It's just it's just a pantomime, really, isn't it? Designed <laughs> to that... bring you fear and hatred and socially engineer you, and you know, it's it's. Unfortunately, John, ninety nine point nine percent of people would think that was real. I know. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, we're it a, keeps we're it, a tiny, keep, tiny percentage that, that keeps it knows. fresh too, John. They do. Yeah, it's just one after the other, and if they do do a lot, then you can't even keep up with what's going on. No, the only solution is we to ran, turn it off. We ran into that last year, uh, Rob. You're right. We couldn't keep up at one time. Remember, they were coming with the truck, and then the gun attacks, and then the other truck attack. Like it was very hard to analyze them properly. Sorry, go ahead, John. No, no, no. I finished. I nothing to say. I don't, I don't watch these things anymore. You know, I, I just see, you know, international disasters or whatever, and I, I just turn off. Can't bother with it. But like you say, it, it's Fair. the ninety-nine Fair percent enough. of the rest of the world that do. That, you know, you go out walk your dog and you bump into someone and they're like, "What do you think of this? What do you think of that?" And you're, you're just like, "What?" <laughs> you know, I can't help myself. I, I, I tell them it's bullshit. I said, "I always my line is don't always believe what you see on TV." Exactly, and, and that that's why I do it too, to stay yeah, relevant. I mean, you don't jump right into it, but you just 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 plant the seed. Yeah. Just plant the seed. But I was um I was getting my truck serviced and I was in the uh in their little waiting area with the T V and the secretary was there and it was I can't even remember what um what story was on and I was pointing out a couple of uh things that just weren't What did we lose there then? <clears throat> Hmm. All the mobiles. There we go. Yep. Getting too, getting too deep there, was I? Yep. I think you shot yourself in the foot there, mate. <laughs> Talking current affairs. Can't be doing that. Yeah. No. So, uh, I'm sitting there in the waiting room. Sitting there in the waiting room. And, um,. Yeah, just pointing out a couple of things that weren't quite right, and she was she was agreeing with me, going, she's going, yeah, yeah, that's not right. Why would that be like that? I said, yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, yeah. they just just plant the seed, you know, with people. And then she more than likely, she went away and believed yeah. everything. Everything. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's called the white. Well, well, that's so how it is. Left, mate. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Dangerous talk to people these days. Face to face, anyway. Mm. Mm. Yeah. What do you think, Adam? Is, is that you, a, you there, Adam? Nope. 
Did you guys see the uh, latest uh, space fraud hoax act? They had a uh, a rocket launch that <laughs> deployed 15 micro satellites to give it the internet to the people of Africa who so desperately need internet. Well, it didn't blow up. <laughs> no, no, he got it was a perfect landing. It landed right on the on the on the bullseye, man. Like literally, like. These kids in Africa are gonna have four gig, four gig Wi-Fi ready to go. <laughs> Lucky them. <laughs> mm. Imagine what they can do. Woo-hoo. Give us all your. Can they get food as well, or just internet? Now, just internet. Sorry. We have uh, profits to meet, shareholders to hit, and you know what I mean. I mean, I don't know about you, but when I was in Africa in 97, 93, they all had mobiles back then, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they have our throw. That's where a lot of our throwaways go to. They had a lot of the Nokias from the uh, 80s and 90s, you know? Mm. Well, I'll have Definitely. To, I'll have to check my photos again because I, to, I seem to remember them just as up to date as we were hmm. oh, it wouldn't surprise me newest phones and 93 that the, can't be right can it the point is it's a crock of shit the latest launch like to me i just see a remote controlled rocket that they built that has a big fire tail that they can get pretty high up and then they can remote control it and land back down and everybody thinks they've been to space so it just looks so phony it's like one of those rockets you used to get as a kid that you can like that comes up and then comes down. But now they have a remote control rocket that they can blow a little fire out the bottom and bring it back. <laughs> it's probably just CGI, mate. Yeah, no, I don't, don't you think they would have a little a little model for the people that actually come to the field to see it like go up so they can't see it? And then they probably just like, I don't know. You're, you could be right. It's probably all CGI. You're right. I think anyone invited to the launch is, yeah. Probably munching on pizza. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Mm-hmm. I see. Oh, no. That's unfortunate. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going to call it quits anyway. Yeah, I think that's probably a show, isn't it? I think so. Well, um, yeah. Cheers for yeah, that. That was that's good. been brilliant. That's his... <laughs> oh, it's a are. good one. It's a good. Yeah, well, I got kicked, I got kicked out. I was I was bouncing in and out. Kept trying to. Um, I would like to add something if that's all right. You, okay, you, you yeah. please. Yeah. A, a, a flat Earth and why you got into it or what what's it what's it for or hmm. why are you bothering or what's it done? The hell are we doing here? What the hell are you doing here? Um, so f- from my point of view, you've just you guys are just from what I've gathered just been talking about conspiracy a b c and d and i think that's how a lot of us get to flat earth one way or the other and we we chat with our friends trying to explain 9 11 and that's believable and somebody believes this and don't believe this don't believe that don't believe that. and and within a short amount of time all of them have gone and they're no longer measurable or seeable or provable or rememberable but the reason I've stuck with flat Earth is because it is provable, measurable, <laughs> and unavoidable. And it's the one thing that will break the paradigm that they can't use, you know, time against us to, to ignore mm-hmm. it and to forget it because it's constantly there. And you can see the level of control because people don't look out the window of a plane or whatever and people people search for the curve i remember doing it myself looking imagining that curve when i'm on a plane now i definitely can see it i can definitely see it you know so to me it's the one thing that is solid and will remain that's provides you to wake people up i i totally agree adam Uh, well said man yeah totally it's it's all I'm after now is is um, is empirical evidence, stuff that I can see, touch, feel, recreate, do myself, rather than trusting, believing, or mm. having faith in someone else. Yeah. Someone mm. else telling me how it is. I'm not interested in that anymore because that we, we've already found out that 
just about everything we've ever been told has been a complete crock of lies. Crock. And it's just not um, acceptable anymore to trust, believe, or have faith in, in something uh, on mm. on this scale. It's something that should be scientifically measurable, testable, repeatable, observable by anyone. Um, you know, if Falkholt's gyroscope was a thing, then they would have one in every school in the country. They'd have it in every museum and every library. They'd have massive ones on display outside in, uh, you know, city centres and everything. If this thing actually worked, um, then it would be everywhere. But it is sold yeah. to you us know what, John, as, as well, executive toy. Carry on. Yeah. Or what you've done is, and 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 one point is that, and and what I would say you've took criticism as you've made something that's repeatable by other people instead of moaning and claiming it's fake. Yep. Yours is is all right. You can't necessarily do it with pocket money, but it's repeatable within the mainstream of anybody who disputes it can go and test it. And I know that's been hijacked. From you, <laughs> some, yeah, but, but you can go and test it yourself. Pound. That's my what I'm saying. You can do it yourself. You know, your camera costs more than that. <clears throat> it did indeed. It did in just just a little bit. Yeah. I just, I just wanted to add to what you said, Adam, um, which is brilliant, by the way, and I stand with you on those thoughts. But um, I think you've got to also look at, at, at what happens when people get to this sort of level of consciousness. Um, in the 60s, I've heard that there was a big flat earth movement. And then the next thing you know, that we got a picture of a round ball from space. And I know that 500 years earlier, you ended up getting burned at the stake if you, if you kept, didn't go along with the, um, the heliocentric model. Um, and it just, it just, makes me nervous because I'm awaiting just as we are, are growing and ready to pull the curtain back. I fear, and maybe I'm wrong, but that a, a major events can happen to shift that all away and take it all away and guide us into that new era, you know, that new will, order. Maybe then that's what we should all thank Miss, Mr. Mr. Swe Mr. Sweary G there for, for actually delivering something that for the cost of a Christmas present can prove your point to all the all the people and family that think you're a complete and utter nutter who's doing the red in. You can do the red in on Christmas Day next year with a gyroscope, <laughs> and as you wait for the turkey to cook, you can prove there's no rotation. Wait till I get my own gyroscope manufacturing hey, company. Uh, right? We hope to have iron <laughs> nail gyroscopes under every tree by 2020. <laughs> what, what annoys me, though, is that I've spoken to the owner of that company that manufactures the gyroscope, and he refuses to um, have faith enough to say that it would measure 15 degrees per hour. Uh, you know, he point blank says, no, it won't. Um, but you can buy another one off me that will, uh, you know, if the cost prohibiting all the rest of it, um, you know, it, all, all they had to do was test it. How what? much for the one he wants to sell you, John? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I'm not buying. I've decided to test mm -hmm. his own. I've got more faith in his own product than he has. And, um, yeah, it proves right. What, what's it what's it like john can i ask um i want to translate it emotionally out oh, here's what i'm saying is like whoa whoa <laughs> hi and happy birthday buddy hi, well. um <laughs> too much noise where i'm at i was trying to get on and talk to you guys but it's loud here happy birthday happy birthday, well. happy birthday to you birthday to you <laughs> <laughs> all right so john um What's it like when you're when you're talking to them? Like, um, is it the same as when you know somebody's lying, and they won't look you in the face completely? Like when you're telling him to look at the gyroscope, is it that uncomfortable? Is that the same feeling where they won't look you in the eye or something? I've What's got, it like? I've got a string of emails um, back and forth from from him. Um, no, I, I think it, it's mainly what I come across every day is, is cognitive dissonance. They, you know, it's spinning. It's a ball. We all know that. So it, it can't be proved 
not to be spinning or a ball. It's it, there's just no way it, it cannot be. It, it's a it, it's a wall of of knowledge that you know isn't going to be scaled because it's not possible. Full stop. So I don't think they're lying. I don't think uh, you know he's, he's ever even considered flat Earth until he came across people like us. Um, but he he was he was perfectly genial to start with anyway. Um, it's interesting, you know, since I spoke to him on, he put a tweet out saying apparently some people think, you know, my gyroscope proves a uh, flat Earth or something. Ha ha ha. And so I I started chatting with him for a while and he hasn't been on Twitter since. So it's it's been a year now. So. Well, you know, nearly a year. Another one bites the dust. It's a shame. I wish I could get shares in the company because I, I initially emailed him to ask him whether his sales in gyroscopes had gone up recently and whether he knew why. And he said, uh, yeah, they have gone up recently and he does know why. And um, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, he's got no faith <laughs> in his own product. They will. I have faith. They all will. The walls are being broken. The gears are starting to turn. The wheels have been rolling. We're starting to pick up momentum. Well, all the beauty of the gyroscope is that you don't even need to own one to actually rationally think this through as a thought exercise. You just have to understand how a gyroscope works. And once you do understand how a gyroscope works and would perform on different surfaces and different turning surfaces and uh, stationary surfaces and that sort of thing, it becomes mind-slappingly obvious that no gyroscope would be of any use on a spinning ball of a planet. There is just no way it could be of any use navigationally, directionally, uh, attitudinally, uh, you name it, uh, on any axis, that thing would never, ever stay still. Mm. The, the problem there, John, is, you know, all the people that I've spoken to about gyro say gravity holds it in position. So how do they use it on the ISS in zero-g? That's right. That's right. Or in probes, or in satellites. That's right. If you can't get, you, you can't talk to them properly. They just no gravity. Gravity pulls it down. Yeah. It has right. to. They say it has to pull it down. It has to keep it there. Yeah. I said, it, but it doesn't. Has to be keeping it pulling towards the centre of the fictitious ball planet. Yeah. Right. Um, it just doesn't work though. I mean, the, what they what they can the only thing they can do is go and dig up some dusty old documents of um, vacuum driven gyroscopes that uh, employ the use of things called pendulous veins which are basically used to dampen the movement of the gyroscope in aeroplanes that were making high high uh, maneuverability um, yeah. Like when they filmed the parabolic spacewalks and the, the parabolic maneuvers? No, it was after World War Two, after they started having dogfights and stuff, because a freestanding gyroscope, undampened, unweightened, will topple if you go, you know, beyond 60 degrees or whatever in, a, in either direction if you're doing you loop loops. Um, you, you know, if you're pulling high-speed maneuvers in these things, then right. an undamped right. mm -hmm. uh, universally mounted gyroscope will topple at some point. So what they right. employed were, you know, weights on the bottom. Sometimes these were electromagnetic, so that that, that was used to cage it when it was on the ground, to cage mm -hmm. it, meaning to draw it level with the, um, the outside horizon, or the, you know, the tarmac. Um, you know, but but the, this is the the straws that they're grasping at that say magically somehow these these small dampening aiding effects to modern gyroscopes um, are responsible for 
pulling it to the center of the earth via gravity and that's what accounts for the curve of the earth adjustment you know the problem is is that these these additions and aids to these gyroscopes it didn't come into effect until the mid 30s and gyroscopes have been used perfectly well for autopilots for attitude indicators bearing indicators you name it um guiding um missiles underwater missiles that's a, that's a huge fact john just sorry let me interject all of the fail safes in this world are done on simple terms so mm -hmm. There's all these fancy freaking digital equipments and sonars and lasers and all this shit. But when you really come down to it and the crux of it and you need something, it's all simple stuff. It's all tried, tested, synthetic, simple, easy stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Another, another, easy one, another easy one is periscopes. How does a periscope work on a, on a globe earth? Yeah. How, do, how far does a periscope stick out from above the sea? Does anyone know? I almost... Try Googling it and you can't find out. I look that up. It's an impossibility to get that information. I, really? I, I tried and I went two pages and couldn't get anywhere. I got naval shit and nothing else. Just, just, I was, just, just I to come back, stuff. John, because I've, I've got a point on that, which might lead to an experiment with your gyroscope, right? Definitely. What what Globers say is that, is that the pull of gravity corrects the gyroscope. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we can say that 9.8 meters newtons per meter squared is enough force applied to realign a gyroscope. Then, okay, if you apply a total force of 9.8 meters, now how you apply that and know that you've applied it to the actual spinning disc evenly is a separate point. But if you what they're saying is if you apply a force of 9.8 meters, it realigns a gyroscope. So you can test that by applying 9.8 and does it return to the original point or stay where you've put it after you've put it there having applied 9.8. Go for Is that it. You mean will, will it repossess the other way, stop and then spin yeah. the other way? If it goes back, yeah. then you haven't reset the gyroscope, have you? You've just you've just held it in a position for an amount of time and then it's gone back. But if if it stays and that's its now fixed position, then surely that answers that question, doesn't it? Interesting, because all the videos use the gravity as the high-level force that resists and pushes against it that causes this whole thing to move the way it does. So if you can prove that, it, huh, that's great, man. Yeah, you should try that, John. But I mean, and of course, the greater sure. distance you travel, that that becomes exponential, like the curve, doesn't it? Because the actual rate of twist that you're saying is applied becomes greater and greater and greater the distance you apply. So therefore, if it's not resetting then the force of gravity changes with distance from where you started from, which is off nonsense, obviously. So it can't be that. Do you get me? Yeah. So it either resets per micrometer or it it doesn't. But 9.8 is yeah. the number, surely, if but, that's I the mean, case. I mean, what I hold, hold, you know, what, what I find in, in the box in my head is that, you know, we're shown... Um, What's the English astronaut Watch guy, um, Tim Peake, playing Tim around Peach. with gyroscopes floating in front of him in zero G, even though they they claim what the ISS is, it's not zero G, is it? It's something like nine tenths G or something. It's they reckon it's a huge amount um, of 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 G. Uh, you know, but they're showing this gyroscope floating around in in midair. So, you know, either the gravity affects it or it doesn't affect it. It's uh, it, it's just ridiculous to me. It's, it's it's a done deal as far as I'm concerned at the moment. Hey, John, what was that really? You, you showed us a video um, probably about six months ago. Now, the guy had that. It was, a, it was a like a large pole with a big weight on the end of it, and he could hardly lift it up. And he spun up a gyro on the end of it, and he was able to lift it up. Yeah, really, really uh, easily. Yeah. That was a that was a really really good one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think really that lectures and lectures. And... I think it was normal TV in the seventies, weren't it? The video you're talking about, Rob. It was like kind of like Saturday afternoon 
at the Palladium stuff where he's oh that was with the dumbbells really heavy weights. weight and yeah the looked, dumbbell that was yeah, a dumbbell yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah that was a good one that shows you what can be accomplished yeah no that was an interesting video no that was quite a recent one um the guy who did that so that yeah we'll link that does that Another not thing demonstrate we... it affecting electromagnetic forces and therefore supposed gravity or what we consider gravity? When when you're seeing that guy lifting that weight and it's using the gyroscope to lift the weight, isn't that an anti-gravity device? Because it's yeah, yep. and but they explain it with torque and momentum and other whatever they're they'll explain it away and math it away. And I know that sounds dumb, but that's what they do. I'm just lining it up now, if you want to see it. Mm. Yes, please. Please, sir. Can we have one more? (laughs) Are we winding this up then, guys, or...? Mm. I'm around. Yeah. No, no, we were, but then we started talking again. Then I keep going. That's only if we were. We need to put a play out to Dr. Tear just to come sure and join us at some point. Mm. Yeah, that's the one, John. I like this one. Yeah, it's fab. I so I don't think there'd be any right, more. So it's any not more spun up there. So this is just an inert bit of metal. He couldn't pick it up. Oh, now they're going to spin it up. That's me on the right. Eh? Someone else said. <laughs> yep. You guys have got the funniest impression of what I look like. I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. We've only got a flat horizon to judge you by, John. You see, that's one. <laughs> and some damn nice looking hands. Slender, albeit, but beautiful. Pianist hands. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that one. Them. Yeah, they're funny old things, gyroscopes. Yeah. But they're very, very simple when you look past the bullshit that we're, you know, told about them. Go look up stuff on gyroscopes and it'll be just full of equations and horseshit. But in reality, just play with one and you'll understand it naturally quite happily. Hmm. John, did you do an experiment where, what the same sort of experiment that you're doing at the moment, but when you spin it up, you spin it up on an angle, so therefore it's you know what I'm you know what I'm saying. So gravity is not affecting it. Well, you can see that it is because it, when you spin it up, it, you're not straight up and down. You spin it up on an angle to start with, and it just stays there. <laughs> would yeah, would that be a good experiment yeah. to um, go? Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, you can point it in any direction and it'll stay there and there's videos on YouTube on this as well uh, with Dr. Lathwaite um, he, he does uh, you know hour long lectures with really decent um, you know gyroscopes precision gyroscopes from the Royal Society and all this sort of stuff and it shows exactly what you're talking about yeah that it, it'll stay sticking in one direction on an angle. Look at that. Right over his head. The basic form of free energy. Who said that? (laughs) I don't know if it is. I don't know if the energy is being transformed somewhere else or what. They're certainly interesting. I can't admit that I understand them to any extent, but I know what their properties are. And the properties go to prove that 
we're not on a spinning ball. Hence why we don't see gyroscopes in science museums or anywhere else. Even the Foucault gyroscope that's in the Paris Museum is a replica of the original, so no one knows what the original was. Who relies on gyroscopes, Sean, in the world that the sheeple know and the MSM world? Who, who, what institutions, people, professions rely on gyroscopes? Pilot, airplane pilots, helicopter pilots, submarine. Um, submarine engineers, whatever they're called. Any anybody who oh. uses a mobile phone, who knows, do you, do you know what I mean? And, and, and basic equipment have gyroscopes, don't they? It's... Well, the mobile phone ones these days are are like mean gyroscopes. They're they're more built on accelerometers and and other, um, you know, I. I, I I'm not going to get too in depth. Okay. Here, it's it's just off. Different purpose. Well, you're saying, John, those ones? They're electronic. So anything electronic runs through a program. So the program can be programmed to show whatever it wants to at, at whatever point. It, like, for example, the PlayStations um, have a gyroscope in them, an electronic gyroscope in them that proves the Earth is mm. rotating. Have you seen that video? Shocking. This it's... is why I stick to mechanical gyroscopes rather than anything electronic, yeah. Yeah. because you can't. It's infinitely harder to to but fake. Doesn't, but doesn't what you're that saying, video say we base the assumption on that they've put the rotation into the thing. Anyway, that video I, I watched it a long time ago, but I remember oh. being critical of, of their assumptions in the PlayStation. In what? One, you mean? Yeah, yeah, the PlayStation mm. control receive one, isn't it? It's mm. set yeah. up on the turn the the old record player, isn't it? I think it's a... something along those lines. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's not. A mechanical... The point is, the software is based on the assumption that a gyroscope does what it says on the tin. Of course, that that's the whole point. So, I mean, yeah. no matter what it's doing, the software will interpret like. Uh, declination on your compass you know essentially what you're doing is taking a compass reading and then you're running that compass reading through the software which is the declination equation and you're coming mm. out with what you're told is what should be the accurate reading but like you say we're running it through software which is is giving you a skewed Result. See George Soros voting machines. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect example. Yeah. Anything that runs through software can be manipulated because it's man created. It's it's written by man. Whereas a mechanical and it's, it's program it's programmable too, right? Programmable. Absolutely. It, it's programmable. Look at you know, time and date dot com, sun calc, moon calc, like we were going to talk about Dr. Zach's video that came out today. Um, mm. You know, the, the, these things they they tell us they're accurate, but I, I can tell you they're not for a start because I've looked at the sunrise and the sunset on the winter and sol summer solstice, and they don't add up to what's being told on online on these logarithm based correct, uh, correct. predictors same problem with flight trackers and gps it's their system that's mm -hmm. the problem of course. so i hear you absolutely so this is why the gyroscope was the for me was the um you know kick in the crotch you can't manipulate a, man, a, a manual you know mechanical gyroscope <laughs> in as mm. easy as you can something that runs through a bit of software mm. that, that you didn't write mm -hmm. that you can my, my whole my whole thing here john was 
all of these is really esteemed professional governmental military retail whatever rely solely on this well we really trust and believe that the gyroscope is is what is the shit this is tells you this keeps you and it's it works on the ball so yeah. how much longer can they deny the results when you keep proving like what you did incredibly when you keep using the tied tried and tested true gyro to show opposite results how long can they hold the denial up what's going to happen well, this is why I'm getting contacted now by gyroscope technicians, by uh, land surveyors, by pilots, by you know senior captains and pilots on uh, you know flag flag flying airlines. Um, they, once you point this out to to anyone uh, who's involved in this sort of arena this area in, in a day on a daily basis it's going to be very difficult to gloss over this sort of thing you, you know radar operators and um, air traffic controllers and flight stewards and pilots you name it they're, they're all starting to you know look at this uh, as they come in contact with this they're starting to look at it probably from a, a position of uh, ridicule and, and laughter and you know I'll shut these guys up in a couple of minutes as we all did and you know th these are intelligent people you, you can't pull the wool over their eyes unless they have you know a, a chronic vested interest or an ego that they've gone round mm. you know they're, they're so invested in in space and and the fact that they're right all the time and, and this sort of thing that they they can't see past what's right in front of their eyes in in so far as you know like a gyro technician contacted me and said that um you know on the, on the he worked for the u.s navy and they were when they fire up the gyroscopes on on the boats they they've got to come to port <clears throat> you know, a day and a half early to fire up the gyroscopes uh, because they take that long to spin up. Now, you know, an hour and a half after spinning up that gyroscope, it would have processed off its original caging line due to the spin of the Supposed. <laughs> Supposed. Yeah. I mean, six hours time, it would have been 90 degrees off. 90 degrees, 90 degrees, yeah, you got you it. Know, 12 hours time, it would have been 180 degrees off, you know, no matter where they were on the globe. The, these are the figures that, that they would have been re registering if that equipment um, was capable of registering in it. And, of course, that equipment was designed initially e exactly to measure that. So... Mm. You know, this is why Rob Durham and that are, are pulling gyroscope directional um, mechanisms and stuff uh, from mm. airplanes and things, and, mm. and, sh and and running them, showing that they're not showing any deviation on their kitchen table, whereas they should. Um, mm. You know, it's it's going to come to a fore uh, because intelligent people are and and people with money are putting their their their, you know, money where their mouth is on this sort of thing. They're hiring mm. fleets of planes and gyroscopes, and they're, you know, they're launching balloons and they're doing all sorts of things. Mm. This isn't going away. It's a, it's almost a new revolution of self-exploration and exploration in the world. I mean, with provable things, it's so bloody exciting. It's it so is. exciting. But I wanted to, I wanted to just touch on what she said about the gyroscope there. And see, I look at, um, I may not be the smartest with the math, but I'll look at uh, stuff like the, oops, the emotions of it. So I always look at this. You can learn a great deal from what people use themselves and, and rely on. So I always look at that. If people are really against one thing, I, I know that one thing probably exists and is real and they actually fear it. And I take the same thing to uh, to this, right? If uh, you know what I'm saying, right, John? Sure. Yeah. 
Well, just I, I I lost the the last part of it because I thought uh, the call smashed out. But yeah. No, I think there's a couple of us left. Uh, yeah. Still there? Are we still alive? There's Ooh. there's three of us. I think Rob's disappeared. But um... well, maybe we should wrap it up then. Um... Where can we find yeah, I think you, that's, I think that's, James? I think that's the show. I think that's sure. the show, guys. I think that was yeah. a, a decent chat. Yeah, it was Nothing great. We planned, but all good. <laughs> yeah, never, yeah, never what we plan. <laughs> no, no, you you kind of put a, the slapped a bit in at the end, but it was. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, no, I thought that was interesting, guys. A real good broad broad chat about a few few topics. Really, it was cool. Well, hopefully, mm. I'll get a few more videos out explaining it a little better because uh, I know it's it's a. Uh... You know, it's um, a micro niche area, but um, it, it really shouldn't be that difficult to explain. But well, well, I hope explain. it's nothing, John. John, okay. if if nothing else, that hope that, that the show shows that something that a tweet can't is that you're not you're not trying to pull the wool over people's eyes. You're trying to investigate and figure it out. And as unfortunate and butt hurt as it is. The globe earthers who believe it's spinning, you are not able to demonstrate that. And if you were, that's what you'd be showing. Yeah. That's what I mean. But it's not there. It's not there. Now, you can argue all you like whether it's a crappy wire that somehow, you know, whatever. But the, the fact the facts are there. If people have got real criticism, I'd be interested in listening to it. Do you know what I mean? And, oh. and working on it. Do you what, know what I mean? When do you think it's coming? Because I think what you're seeing now in terms of resistance from Globers is just really well, what they think, very smart, educated people um, who don't have any time for it. And I think they, they have troll us and maybe look at it. But when do you think we're actually going to see some real resistance from some, you know, hard you Globers on it? The other day that Jaron put out about the students um, showing the curve of the earth. Did you see that? I've I've been in touch with one of the guys on Twitter and um because what was interesting was when you watched the thing going down, yeah. I mean it was a total total GoPro lens. I didn't even mention that to him. Mm. But I've I've chatted with one of the guys and what I thought was interesting and what you always see happening is the balloon burst because I think we chatted it out either online in the past about putting valves in balloons and stuff. Yeah. But they had some release software that allowed a controlled descent because obviously the equipment was paid for by the British taxpayer. Mm -hmm, so, nice. <laughs> so, you know, we didn't want it landing in a field <laughs> in, in France. So it's, you know, I mean, it was, um, so I think they had some, apparently it failed the balloon burst still, but they had software for it. So I'm waiting. He, he said he's going to, uh, I'll, I'll get access to it when, when everybody else does. But the university is going to release that data on that but release I mean, the mechanism. Fact that they which... send out, uh, you know, that that sort of expensive equipment, blah blah blah, and it it it's got a <sighs> GoPro lens on it. Is, I mean, was there no one in that, don't... in that department that just turned around and went, well, hold on a minute, can we not stick a normal lens on there so that we can see it through our own eyes rather than some full lens? Well, but that's the point. The whole thing, if you look at the YouTube video, was sponsored by GoPro, wasn't it? But I don't care about that, John Wright. What I know is I think it was me, you, and James, wasn't it, anyway, that were talking about this. And basically, us three have come up with the same combined efforts of the University of Leicester, which you is a controlled descent. You have a, so, a balloon that had a, a valve on it that let out air as it, it felt it was going to explode. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as, that, as, it, as, it, as it escalated, as it went higher, brainer, you know. surely. <clears throat> mm, it would have to be. Well, apparently, uh, but they have proper software on there, so I'm interested to see that. But again, it was just a total, as Jaron smashed it. Do you know what I mean? Total bendy, bendy, bendy lens at the bendy bit. lens. <laughs> yeah, bendy but, lens. Uh, but I would be interested to hear from anyone involved in that experiment that had misconceptions or mis you know had 
some grievances about the fact that they were using only those cameras and how on earth do you know what i mean now that it's it's been mm. it's been plastered all over the papers and the mainstream as as these students prove the curve of the earth that's exactly what the headline was that's disinformation for the younger generation, though. That's It seems like pre-programming for the kids and the people, maybe three generations down the line, right? Were they young, like 20s, 25s? Students, but, I imagine they were, yeah. but It doesn't matter, mate. Have a look at the Twitter feed. Is that for every standard student comment you'd expect, there's a bucket load of... It's a GoPro lens, you idiots. Are you not are you you thick? Do you think the curvature is the same b- below the clouds as afterwards? Mm. You can't you can't delete a timeline. It doesn't honestly. Mm. I, it's not worth People arguing that the world could be now. People no, fill the timeline for it. No, we're making a difference. We are making a difference. <laughs> On a side note, guys, uh, Adam, I don't think we've ever told you, but one of our goals at the Iron Realm was to. Uh, launch one of Picard's capsules with us in it. Yes. <laughs> and I've All recently found yep. And All of recently... us at one time. Can't can't think of any problem there. <laughs> Are we no. all going up together? I'll well, take well, I'll, I'll, I'll five of us. Anyways. I'll bring the Hennessy. I'll bring a bottle of Hennessy, boys, and we'll have fun. I'll bring a parachute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Bring two please. <laughs> no. I've just found out that the um, province that I live in, in Canada, is actually um, the best place for ballooning. Mm. So we probably want to do a launch out here, mm. which would be great. I I gave a, a, a donation towards Bob, Bob's uh, Globebusters balloon launch, and I'm waiting, look eagerly awaiting the next one. But I'd be more than happy, guys. To have a have a more hands on stuff because I mean I was the point I was making in terms of the reason I contacted this guy was to to get hold of this data to pass it on to Bob. But I mean, if we could use it ourselves, let's build a, a yeah. parachute. Let's build a balloon. I'd like to think, Adam, that you've been a um, what you would call it um, an honorary member of the realm since we've had you on. So it'd be Absolutely. great to get you on board. That's a and, pleasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No as long as I get, if I get a badge or, a, or like a card, <laughs> a membership card, then I'm happy. We got Obviously, a guy working on stickers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's 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 uh, offer accepted, guys. It's been <laughs> it's cool. I think it's kind of unusual. I haven't heard anybody else um, thinking about it either. But I mean, I would, and I'm serious. I would totally recreate it. And that, that's the goal to do think- with that. Uh, Wonderful Picard did. That that would be awesome. I don't know about my wife letting me do it. <laughs> uh, I'm not good with heights. We have a, a place called the Heights of Abraham, which is like a place that goes up a, up one of the cliffs in Derbyshire in a, in a mm. cable car. And oh man, I'm I'm not good. I'm not good. <laughs> I get I get halfway up there and I can see the road beneath me and I'm bad. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I don't I'm know about stopping there. The have you seen floating egg? Have you seen the bridge in China? They just built its glass over a no, uh, over no, a no. very high height. <laughs> you wouldn't go there. No, no, I walked no. Out I'm, on I'm the not. Spinnaker the other day with the glass bottom floor on it, and uh, no, I don't like that. Mm. Not, I uh, that. I went up to the CN Tower in Toronto a bunch when I was a kid, and they have a glass floor at the very top. That was. Oof. Nerve-wracking. No, not for me. I'd much rather send up a proper, what, 35 millimeter lens, 50 millimeter lens. Yeah. <laughs> well, it looks like so. You guys will stay on the ground, and me and the other I'm... two monkeys, we will go up in the capsule. <laughs> James, James, I'm happy to fund. I'm happy to fund you. Yeah. I'll give you a camera, right? And um... I'd, I'd be happy with that, bro. We're going to put you in communications alpha. You will yeah, be the mission coordinator. I'd be happy with that, but, mate, you won't get me up there. You won't get me up there. <laughs> well, I, I know there's two other guys that will come with me, so it's going to be exciting. I'd rather go to the Antarctica or, or the Arctic in a boat. 
when are we going to see something? When are we going to hear of somebody that actually went and did it and either got shot down, got told they couldn't, got a permit, or actually made it and can show us something? It's got to be on, on people's minds to get there. There was someone on Twitter a few months back who said that they chartered a plane to Antarctica and they they um, they got turned away by the military or... Hmm. I would I would suggest that the the mainstream media also, as well as lying to us, acts as a warning mechanism, and that if you look at stuff, you'll see there was reports recently of lone crosser dies mm. trying to get to Antarctica, and that's not a that's not well, a news one of the story. Queen's yet. cousins died recently, didn't he? Well, yeah, but they're they're, they're quite clear messages. If you try this, mm. you'll be dead. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Not only have we put this, this, and this here, if you then actually get there and start it, you'll be <gasps> unfortunately fail on your in, 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 in intrepid Plus expedition. Galactic, uh, Just recent. Uh, you name it. Anything anything going up or out is destined for failure, is what the programming uh, that we get is. Desolation, death, devoidness. Not possible. Other yeah, people smarter films. have done it. Feature films recently, <laughs> isn't there, on Antarctica and um, voyages? You know, there was one last year, I think it was, and it was just Ooh. death and desolation and cold and bitter. Wind. Even um, David Attenborough's "Only the Emperor Penguin Survive." <laughs> you know, it's yeah. deadly. You know, and. <laughs> Now, it'll be interesting to see what the story is, but you guys have just made me remember something that I, I am so excited to talk about, is how much how much land on the map are they hiding right now? Like, just if you go out in the Pacific Ocean or whatever, and you just, you know, if you go to certain coordinates on the Earth, I, I, there's land, and we don't know about it. It's, it's not on our maps. Well, how much of it do you think year, there is? I went out on a, on a 50-foot schooner and mapped it personally and can tell you that there's 32 percent more land than they tell it now nah, i'm talking bollocks <laughs> unless, we've been there. unless we've been there we have no idea we, we have no idea if we're just the inner he, circle human postulate I, not a not a chance no i would i would postulate to you that that there are old maps that show islands in the Atlantic that apparently aren't there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking about stuff like high Brazil and, and places like that, but um, if you look around Iceland, there are a number of islands that were there in the 1600s that don't apparently exist and et cetera, et cetera. There's, That's there's exactly what I'm talking like about. That. Yeah. And then if you think about the Pacific in which is something which is less has less traffic and is traversed significantly less and is twice as big. How much could you hide there? So my answer, like John, is I don't know, but I think the 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 the, the possibility to hide huge amounts of land, and if you start to reimagine the map, and I'm happy to dismiss the Gleasons, it's a useful tool. Mm. I don't I don't necessarily think it's a, an accurate reflection and. That's where we succeed, though. We don't claim as flat earthers to have no, this baby naive. all locked up, and that's why we will continue to look at every point. We're different. It would be it's unscientific, great. wouldn't it? It would be totally unscientific to say that is fact because that is not scientific no. to say that. And no, we're it, happy to say I don't know is the difference between hmm. flat earthers and scientists, pseudo scientists. Hmm. We don't mm -hmm. know because we don't have a budget of fifty million pound a day to go and find out. Give us a budget mm -hmm. of fifty million pound a day, and we'll tell you within a week what the hell we're setting on and where the boundaries are and whatever. I'll, I'll tell you what else, John, and 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 this is from a from a, a science boy that started to look into this and and not and looking at other spheres, astronomy and physics and stuff, is that. I'm not also prepared to have an ideology, a theory, and when I'm presented with clear evidence to the contrary of that theory, 
invent things such as dark matter, dark energy, to keep alive my theory. I'm I'm more than happy yeah. to Grab rewrite it. my theory and Grab start from zero. Yeah, and I think that's that is actually what's gone wrong is we've built shit upon shit upon shit, and it's we're so such... far up our own ass that that. The, the fu- and we what, believe it. What we call the fundamentals of our, mm. uh, our modern day science are literally mm. built on assumptions and and theories. <laughs> absolutely, you've got to you go and trace it back um, to its basic source of how did they find out the distance to the moon, the distance to the sun, the distance to planets. It's based on. Kepler's assumptions, or not necessarily assumptions, but they never ever had a linear distance to any celestial object in space. So there is absolutely no. Kepler may have put the nail on the head saying that it was 0.72 um, AUs away, and therefore we can work out from his formula that it's this far away, that's in, in relation to this, it's this far away. Hmm. But without a linear distance to start with, the entire thing is based on theory, assumption, and guesswork. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I've no problem agreeing that if we can find one true distance to a celestial object out there, that we can then put the entire puzzle piece back together. We can put the entire solar system, if they want to call it that, back together. But the fact is that we don't have that linear distance between us and a celestial object in order to map out everything else that we've assumed. All these light we ain't got billions squat. of light years. We've got Dude, squat. We, we ain't got, we got squat diddly. We got a bum hand at the poker table. And they're, they're bluffing us for 30 years like they got a royal flush. It's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> We're sitting on rotten cabbage. Yeah, good we got to get it out. Get it, the, get the, it out. the emperor has no clothes. It Absolutely, is, is the be all and end all of it is that they really do not have anything that we can base our fundamental cosmological beliefs on. It's Mm-mm. pure sand. In, A bunch that, of... Isn't that the truth? Because you'd think by now. I mean, how, how long you've been? I don't know what's what's year and a half, two years that I've been no year and a half I've been following this. Do you know what I mean? And, and intrigued by it. Yep. Thanks, thanks to certain individuals. Um, do you know what I mean? Who, who you know, who, who, who poke you and 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 I use it as a tool now. I mean, I'm I interact with people who I would consider a intellectual and degree held, doctorate held, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I tell you, there's a difference now, mate. Is that people don't call me mental when I start it. Really? Yeah. Whether that's because I hold a certain position or I'm a gobshite and they think, oh, just shut up, me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just it could remember, be that. Oh, he's remember, off again. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, remember, you're the key to that because a lot of people don't give a shit. So they're reading you as a person. And yeah. the longer here's a good, you. Here's a good example a guy that I've, I've known for 12, 13 years is a rep and we've we've always debated i should say um intelligently stuff do you know what i mean in terms of when he's been bringing to and he's from a very very different background to me his dad's a high court george and stuff a real very different to my working class of being. and and i mentioned it to him um in between christmas and new year he popped in and um he didn't shoot me down and i got on my whiteboard that i used to teach the students and Showed him some orbits and stuff and a few other bits and bobs and got a few texts a few days later saying, oh, this one makes sense. And pro-. you know what I mean? Yeah, Not. And then he's the sort of guy that would go, and I'd take it really well, you complete and utter numpty. That's you know brilliant, I mean? though. I mean, that's yeah. amazing, amazing stuff. Well, yeah. Like, and I so- said, like I said the other day, is that I think we can, we can literally convert or or persuade or or push someone into testing it for themselves with the right approach um, yep. but the problem is is finding that right approach and i i unfortunately used up 
a lot of bad approaches with no and, and how many friends. people how many people are you are you tight enough with to get the shot because if you don't have a lot of friends and a big outlet like you're not going to get the shot yeah I, I had a small amount of friends and now i've got a very small amount of friends because yeah. i used the wrong approach basically i wouldn't mm-hmm. You only ever had you only ever had the same amount of friends, mate. Yeah, yeah. you're right. You're right. So true. You're right. But um, the, the yeah, the point is, is uh, there there is a right approach with each and every person out there, and I think I'd um, if I had my time again on that, I don't think I'd change anything. But now I know that there is a different approach for different people. Um. And I would certainly smart man evaluate the situation clearer before I jump in and go, "Yo, first flat, dude, don't you know?" <laughs> my, my brother-in-law, who I speak to, you know, periodically over drunken evenings when he comes down and family meetups. So it's always mm-hmm. he's he's more than happy to accept the world is flat, right? Oh, yeah. He doesn't argue with anything I give him. But as he says to me, I, I really don't care. Don't care. Yeah, there you Thank go. You. What's, the What's the point? So what? Yeah. Right. I lost my brother-in-law with the moon landings being fake. <sighs> no. <sighs> Can't happen. Can't be the case. Nope. Nope. I've seen it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I lost, I lost another mate with chemtrails. And mm. I've lost uh, another mate. Um, no, that was just the ego. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's um. I've, I've got a mate, mate on chem- chemtrail. Started me off on on one of the early things post nine eleven. Chemtrails was one of the things that I noticed as a as a, just a sentient person. Hmm. You know, what are these things? Uh, they never was there when I was a kid. There was, nope. do you know what I mean? And 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 that, and my. One of the girls that works for me, her husband is a uh, aer- aerospace engineer for, for Rolls Royce, which is in you know just outside Nottingham, mm-hmm. and he does the safety checks on the engines and you mm. know all this sort of stuff. And I raise chemtrails to him, and I'm still waiting, other than it being a contrail, of which I've given him new. You know, we've all we can all cite. Yep. It's not this. It's you know. E- so even. Even then, you run the risk of losing him at the outcome, though, because even if he says it, he'll be like, "So what? So they're spraying something? It's probably not what you think." They'll, they're not willing to look at the bigger picture outside of that, Adam. And I think, like Rob, has people in his life that that you get to a point, and then they just disassociate, anyways. Like, yeah. who cares? It's it's not round. So what? That's you know, cognitive dissonance. Mm. That's the. Exactly it- what well, it's, it, it, it's, it's the ends of, if I'm being honest, it's the ends of the cognitive dissonance. Most of the time you convince yourself that something isn't true because of other attributes in your belief system. What you're starting to see now, and this is the positive thing from my perspective, is people aren't no longer seeking solace in the positive aspects of their system, their belief system. They are d- dismissing all aspects yeah, of both yeah. systems saying, that's the end of, so of an argument mm. yeah, it was the end of an argument it's, it's not long to dispel it before well something it, will make it pop say, isn't it it's, it's the first they violently oppose you blah 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 and then yeah. finally they they all admit that it was obvious from the beginning hmm. which is basically them saying so what so hmm. what so they're spraying yeah so what that is them reaching the end of the um, what is it? The process of denial Dissonance, or something yeah. or whatever. They putting on the rose glasses. That's the isn't that's what the sorry to bring in the Bible, but biblically that's what they say. A fool, a real fool. The meaning of a real fool is somebody that knows the difference between right and wrong, or how a thing works, and still chooses. To yeah. go ahead with it, yeah, and that's cog- that. that's cog dissonance. That right? is cognitive dissonance, right? <laughs> they cannot exercise two opposing paradigms and uh, agree with one, or they need to have one um, 
or the other. The they, way, they can't the, way the way I was always taught it, I did A level psychology as a kid because I really I did physics for a year and I didn't know. It was just, it was, it didn't make sense. It was nonsense. And I, I genuinely had had enough. And it was, I, I said to the teachers, I, I need something, nice, easy A level thing, <laughs> which didn't go down well. So I said, I either fancy sociology or psychology because I should easily get a pass in that anyway. So I ended up with psychology and I did get a pass, but that, that's in there. But, but I, I remember in, 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 Within that, you know, um, being taught that at, 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 at A level, do you know what I mean? Those ba- how, those how basic fundamentals, and the analogy, yep. the analogy they gave me was, is that you have, you go and buy a pair of shoes, and you buy them for thirty quid, and you walk down the street, and you see the identical pair of shoes for twenty five quid. But on the way home, you convince yourself that those shoes are slightly different than the ones you've got, and the trim's slightly better on the edge, and it's got mm. this on it, and it's got this, and I'm sure the heel's harder wearing, and and it's that you know deep down that they're the same shoes, but you convince yep. yourself because you don't want to believe you spent a five or more unnecessarily. Have you seen the experiment where they get people to pay more for a twenty dollar bill, so they'll over they'll pay the bid on it, and they'll it was kind of a mental one. It's on a show called Brain Games, but they start with 20 bucks. And then uh, as it turns out, uh, I guess, I can't remember. I think eesh. the way it works, they, they ended up getting people to pay more for the 20 um, Rob, just by fooling themselves the same Rob, way. They've, they've done a national version of that here. They brought out the new five pound note. And the, there's people going around checking to see if they've got on the coding on the side, the numbers AK-47. And apparently yeah. those ones are worth more. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's Come on. That's Willy Wonka-style golden bar stuff, isn't it? Baseball apparently, card. It's Can worth more than a five one Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to... Uh, you see they're bringing out a new... Uh, sorry, James. As they're bringing Go ahead, John. A new pound coin in the UK 20 sides or something <laughs> it's pentagon shaped I don't, I don't know what it is yeah, it's got a goat on the back yeah it's a goat <laughs> and, you, you, has you everyone seen kidding. this book here? and it's red yeah. <laughs> you all well, seen this book here? I am now uh, all right, so we got, this, was, this was given to one of my boys um, Everything hang on, I'm wrong, in the wrong hand. Hang on. Is wrong. Excellent. All right, it's not what you think. Hmm. <clears throat> so we were wrong because we thought the Earth was flat. It's not uh, pear shape. The, the person who gave it to my boy is having a go at me. That's why they gave it. <laughs> they didn't say that. They didn't say that. Don't have to. No. So it brings up. Uh, you got a wood a burner? Thing. Hey? You got a wood burner? No. <laughs> so, I see yeah, it's got all the up. usual suspects there eclipses, um, Aristophanes. The Aristophanes, all the bad boys are here. Airplane Wait till we break, break them down. They're moving in a curve. <laughs> yeah, when the airplane flies, it looks to be flying in a straight line, but it's actually flying in a curve. Yeah, that's don't, proof. Don't don't look, don't you know? Don't look. It's, don't. Remember. It's written in blue. When when an airplane is what? Go back, go back. When an airplane is flying in a, what looks like a straight line over the surface of the earth, it's actually well, moving in a curve. Well, which way is it curving? Down. The, so they are the way, so the way saying moving. that planes do nose down. Planes don't fly level. They definitely nose down all the Stop time. Stop being logical, Adam. These are Dr. not the planes D, you're looking for. Not. Uh, Who's printed that? These are not the planes you're looking for. 
if this was done in like 2015, you know it's counter propaganda for I flat Earth. It was a hoax. Uh, what oh are they saying? Oh my goodness. <laughs> what are they saying, Rob? They're saying the moon landing wasn't a hoax because in 2012, probes orbiting the moon took photos of the spacecraft. Oh, so it, it catches you in. It catches you in thinking, oh, shit, the moon landing was a hoax. Yeah, then. right. No. <laughs> this, this looks like high-level propaganda to the flat earth, man. Somebody spent some time making this piece who's of the, junk. Who's the publisher? DeGrasse, it looks like. Na- looks name like. is Shane. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, bet you uh, Neil deGrasse has a hand in this shit, or Bill Nye, I bet. Looks ABC, like that. I, I'll go for either Fairfax or ABC. Shelter Harbor Press, New York. Right, I'll go to the back. Google. Author. What do we got? It's an author, so, Tom Jackson. I'm bought a lot. For sales in the United States and Canada. Mm. Two can. Two can books. The picture researcher. Mm. I'll be right 2015. Yeah, that's new. Wow. So that'll be after the flat earth revelation <laughs> and realization became popular. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. So, and that'll be this... also. Tying in with after <clears throat> with the um, NASA releasing the second photo of the Earth since yep. 1972, two uh, that they released kindly for our 50 million dollars a day um, back in 2015. Super strong gravity, hey? Black holes have super strong gravity. But I thought gravity mm. was a constant. Is that Stephen Hawking they're mentioning too? Might yeah. as well throw in a high level name. The name drop. <laughs> mm. <laughs> ben Light. Notice if how an they astronaut put this... fell into a black hole, he or she would be stretched like elastic when crossing the event horizon. <laughs> <laughs> Says astronaut Mr. Bean. No, but that that's that look, guys, that has to be true because they've got all the proof of previous experiments where they've put stuff into a black hole and seen it stretch. Absolutely. Exactly. So they've got a bloody yeah, they've got that evidence and it's there that proves mm. that if you go past the black hole, you stretch past it. Says because Stephen Hawking says so. Who was there? No, he's dead. Look, they've got look that looks like Mr. Bean. Alan Bean. They've got no, I'm talking about. Alan Bean's not dead, is he? Man, he Rob, must have been dead years ago. Rob, me. can you can you take a, a bunch of high level shots with your good camera of that book so I can make memes? Because this is gold. This needs to be tweeted <laughs> out. I need to make memes stat on this book. That's a good idea. That is a good idea. Mm-hmm. Especially if it was a, a a sly kick in the nuts to you, Rob. It would be a oh, it was. funny sure thing it was. to make a video oh, we are pointing out how ridiculous it is. Yeah, let's do a debunk video on it because this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Full debunk, I like and, then you, <laughs> and then you could give it to your children, and then say, "And once you've finished digesting that load of garbage, then watch this video that Daddy made <laughs> and, and learn Haven't something." We, isn't there a? There's a YouTube video out today. Go back to the other page. There's a YouTube video out today that addresses that that point about the meteorite. No, the, just the other side of the book. Mm-hmm. This bit there. Meteors get hot as they strike through Earth's atmosphere, but what's left of them after hitting the ground is only one to... to Antarctica. Point. I think, no, there's somebody that's got this proof that there's a... They talk about a 30 million ton meteorite that hits the Earth. Here we go, that one. Oh, oh my God. I'm, I'm making a meme out of that. 
Uh, and they've got 1,500 tons of it left. So the, I think, yeah, it'd be good fun to go through all the, it book by page by page because I bet Most they see Most meteorites are found in Antarctica. Who <laughs> finds them? Nobody's Bird, allowed yeah. there. Mr. Bird. John Kerry. Uh, yeah, John Kerry. I forgot about this book. Give it to us the other day. I got to thank your friend, man. This is great. It'll yeah. turn him to be a, a blessing for us. <laughs> yeah, do thank him. That That's hilarious. Oh, what's this one? ISS? Do they have ISS? There is no gravity in space. Not quite. It is gravity that keeps Earth in orbit around the sun. Oh. <laughs> mm. Magic of gravity. So there you go. I think that's about, about it, I think, for the stuff that we like. <laughs> It, it just goes, you know what, I, stuff, I, I find it shocking that he goes out of his way because he's so Ooh. uncomfortable to give your child a book. <laughs> this is a bit presumptuous, really, isn't it? That, you know, what if he'd given him a Bible or a Quran or something? Yeah, but it's desperate, isn't it? It's a desperate attempt that, Rob, you need to read that and go around and go to him so that he stays sane for the rest of his life and can live in his paradigm. You need to go around and say, I've read your book, and shit, I was wrong. Everything's okay. It all makes fucking sense now. (laughs) I I I don't know what I was thinking about, mate. Yeah. If I only gave me that book, it it, it was a bit like the Jehovah's Witnesses coming around. (laughs) Thank God you turned up on a Sunday morning. Mm. You know what I mean? Otherwise, I wouldn't have figured that out. If I was you, Rob, I would use that book as a learning tool for your children <laughs> and do one page a night and just get them to get them to read it and go, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense, no problem. Oh, and then evolution. Show them your research for the day on how all of it. Lizard-like scale. Oh, well, they're on dinosaurs. Here we go. Yeah, I would use that as a curriculum, as a teaching curriculum on how they're being bullshitted from day zero. Oh my gosh. I got to get this in digital. You got to copy this on on the whole book in digital form so we can (laughs) debunk this sucker frame by frame. It's going to be majestic. There is a hundred thousand memes in there, isn't there? Oh, yeah. I can smell the fear coming off the book and where I was far away as you are, Rob. <laughs> and second of all, it's crazy. It shows me they're scared. Get Karen on the case with her memes as well, and uh, Mike as well. <laughs> that that's that's the worst one, guys. Dinosaurs, you know. That shows that the people who are messing that's with their minds. They're evil such fuckers. A fraud. Yeah, but. I love dinosaurs. I, I love know. dinosaurs, and they've ruined dinosaurs. I could cope with not having Star Wars, but <laughs> dinosaurs just really... But they've only really been around 200 years. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but do, do you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. That's evil, man. That's messing with you. Oh, time, dude. Man. The 100%. final frontier. They, they destroyed the final frontier. You but, can have Star Trek. I'm not bothered, right? But dinosaurs, that's fucking harsh. Because yeah, that yeah. was just we've just discovered a new oh. frontier, i.e. south. Huh? Come again. Yeah, but it's cold. It's cold. How man. do we know? <laughs> yeah, it's a fair point. Mm. We have no idea. We have no idea. I do have it's a true. theory on this. That it's okay. it's hot. On the other side. So, so you talk about this is a bit deep. It will take a bit of explaining if you want to waffle. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> right. So, if you think about Mount Meru and a tor- we really need Richard for this one, and he'd probably help explain. It. But if you think mm. about Mount Meru and a toroid, and they talk about Meru being Eden, etc., mm. etc. 
sent and and there's at Mount Meru, it's daylight all the time, and you follow that toroid on the outside all the way to, and it sucks light in, and you have to listen to Ken Wheeler's stuff. Mm, really mm-hmm. get, great get stuff, great easily. stuff. But as it pulls it in into the centripetal or central acceleration down, yeah, well, that is also going to pull light and heat, that magnetic field. So the point on Mount Meru is going to be lit 24-7 because it's going to pull light via the magnetic fields down on those toroids or those fields wherever the sun is on its orbit. So it's always going to be... So that's... And that's why I'm doing this map drawing stuff based on magnetics. But So that's in the centre. So if you then think on the outside... Where is it, Adam? On the map, like what country and who controls the actual location of Mount well, Peru, just for shits well, and gigs? Who knows? Well, if you look at Google Earth, it's water in it now. It used to be ice that they, they draw a bit of, but it's just water. So there's definitely nothing there north. And that's why there's all this nonsense about the south, because I think you can go north, but nobody needs to look north, do they? Top Gear's even been there. So there's definitely not a need to look north. And I think that's the case of San Diego. (coughs) But the the point I was making on the south, so if you imagine that toroidal field, Mm. which is definitely in power, on the outside, there's going to be a pull on on the reciprocating southern magnetic pole that must exist in, in a magnet. So as that's that's going to pull it. So on the outside of that toroid, which I assume is on the outside of what we call the South Pole or the perimeter, mm. there should also be light and heat generated there, which if you follow some of the other stories, which such as the Iron Iron Realm, realm yeah. Yeah, that, that, that fits and makes sense in, in that sense as well, because it talks about the sun disappearing and then reappearing and then kind of being there constantly in this strange light. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I don't have much faith in that document, but like I say, some people do. There, there's a lot to the tourist here, though, and the lens model that merits um, looking at. I completely agree. Yeah. I do I think enjoy if you the... It's flat, the um, experiments with lighters inside bowls and things like this, showing the light going all the way around the outside of the bowl, um, depending on where you you put it inside mm-hmm. the bowl. I, I like that sort of thing. That's um, Jeffrey Grupp did a lot on that. Um, I think the sun, the moon, the stars, everything we see is uh, beyond our comprehension at the moment because we've been so brainwashed even even the people you know us that have unlearned so much stuff have been so brainwashed from birth to accept numerous things that it's almost impossible to see what is right in front of our eyes well, I think everything that we have to imagine, we have we, we you you did it earlier, John. In incidentally, you, you used the term solar system, and that's yeah. the trouble. You're kind of having to reinvent every frame of reference that you have that's bigger and scales up as you try to conceive of stuff and reconceive of stuff. You're having to reinvent the frame of reference it in because there's nothing there because. Mm. The con the construct of the lie is fantastic. It's I know solid. how to do that, though. I know a way to do it. You got to shut off your TV and connect yourselves with like-minded people. It helps. <laughs> Wait, how can I do that? <laughs> well, you're too. I know. I mean, I was I was removed from the system. I mean, I'm here by by plan, I guess. But it wouldn't, you know, the position I'm in, I wouldn't have chosen. So I, I right, I am here so well, I can, it's easy for me <laughs> i guess i shut the tv off uh, seven years ago 
<clears throat> voluntarily. And probably the best thing you did seven years ago. Absolutely. God, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, you know, you, you think you're going to be bored, but if you, well, that was the time I discovered, you know, podcasts and past lectures and, you know, talking realized, face to face yeah, again. Talking, yeah. <laughs> yeah, funny that, right? because they tried, uh, I mean, they successfully killed that in the UK by, or the, in Britain, by destroying the pubs. That's where I spoke to, you know, hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's too right. And they, they strangers. That. Yeah, strangers. I'm going, it guys. Matter. Dude, oh, all take right, care. Well, well, take it easy, bud. All right. See ya. Have a good one. See ya, bud. Thanks yeah, for sharing the book. I could be standing in a in a pub next to Sir General So and So, and you know the guy who delivers coal, and you know the, the town the lawyer. <laughs> yeah, the chef, the town lawyer, the geologist. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, no one, it, it's where you leave your ego at the door a lot of the time. Um, it, it's it's the equivalent of the smoking room. That will, oh, you know, I, mi I out, miss those. Outside the smoking I... door where you're no, no, just rubbing sharing shoulders a butt, even. with the managing director and stuff who's puffing on a, mm. you know, on a, on a, um, a Rothmans or whatever. And, uh, a Rothmans know, blue. Yeah, it, that's that's the classic. Uh, that's why I always loved smoking, is because you always meet the most interesting people in the, the outside the smoking room. But it's not worth it, man. I mean, I I do too. I'll never have those little moments with strangers where we're huddled outside in the Canadian winter sharing a ciggy, <laughs> or meeting someone after like literally dying mentally on a plane because you couldn't smoke for seven hours and then you find that one other smoker and you rush to the exit i'll never do that again but uh, it, it's still worth it to quit i was i must say for now you're you're hastening my post on my blog about smoking and how we've got it completely wrong i know I was hoping I would, because I've been, I've been afraid of it. And lately, I've been learning to face my fears. So I want to stand and meet that challenge, because uh, I think there's something to it. About two been... years ago, I I was exactly the same. I thought, you know, you're a researcher, then you need to research the things that are potentially doing you harm. So I started researching drinking and smoking, and um, as much as I tried you know from an unbiased point of um researching smoking i i couldn't help but come across numerous lengthy well footnoted well researched well linked articles telling me exactly why smoking was actually good for you why it was protectorant for your lungs why it was insisted upon by the deans of um, public schools in London and around, like Eton and what was the other one? Eton and uh, I can't remember the other one. But um, you've got to I... make sure to tell everyone though that the type of tobacco you're talking about is not the poisonous death sticks that the uh, big companies make like no what it's I'm different talking about correct tobacco what i'm not talking about is cigarettes excellent just thought i'd, I'd clarify that for the listeners no, I'm not talking about cigarettes i'm talking about tobacco and no. at the moment it's um you know as as pure tobacco as you can get but i'll tell you what john john <laughs> yeah. there's, there's what you're saying there and i was about to interject and then you qualified it and you know and 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 I have a lot of theories about cancer stuff I've read, uh, uh, you know, privately for, for years about its cause. And it's not something I'd want to get into now, mm. but the point you make that you and James make there in terms of not the the muck you're given um, no. in in cigarettes and that now, but actually tobacco and and that. And you can grow. Your there own. are issues, and 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 it, and it goes back to the 
causes of all cancer. Um, but no, no, I think that's, that's a chat for another time that I, I, I wouldn't even want to start now. But agree. A, it'd be a really good chat because I've got a lot of good alternative theories as to the causes of cancer. I'd like to get the doctor on that one. And me being a cancer survivor mm. would be good as well. But it'd be great to get the doctor T and you guys uh, talking all about that on a health show or something. I, I've been uh, sort of personally researching cancer for about the past five years as I was convinced that was going to be what killed me. And I was shit scared, to be perfectly honest, which is why I decided, you know, to kick myself up the arse and say, you're a researcher, now go and research it. If you're going to, you know, if you're going to be scared of something, then at least have a rational fear of it and understand what it is that you're scared of. And yeah, after five or six years of researching it, I've come to certain conclusions as well, which I'd like to share with anyone else who, who's you know sort of done similar so yeah I, i'd be up for a, a, a sort of show on that because cancer is not something i'm scared of anymore or, or smoking or anything else i'm doing um mm. because i can see i i believe i can see now where the cancer is coming from and how to prevent mm. it mm. Mm -hmm hugely arrogant point of view and a hugely stupid point of view to to put across as I don't have cancer and I um, don't plan And that's the cancer. only reason that's the only reason you say it because you think oh don't don't or touch wood I'll say that just in case I get cancer mm -hmm. and if I say that I won't get cancer well but... it goes a little bit further than touching wood there's you know there's a lot of research behind it and what I do is I don't want to live forever, but what I do want to do is mitigate my bad habits with good habits so that There's I can no live both chance times. for us. There's no place for us. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that, James? What That's is me. this thing that builds our dreams Who's yet that, slips away from us? Who wants to live forever? Ah, the Queen. Lovely. Lovely. Uh, it's Saturday night, I thought, you know, have a booth. No, absolutely. absolutely. Did, did that make sense, though? I mean, it did, yeah. A lot. Yeah. The only thing I'd say is the rate of cancer increase. It's, 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 it's. But cancer's t caused by toxins. <laughs> It, oh, you see, get into it. It's your, it's toxins in your body. So, the more C the toxins coupled with choices that you make, that well, has it, some effect, that, I believe. Well, that, that's a choice of whether I I put a toxin in my body or not. But then there's there's non-choice toxins like chemtrails and pesticides and fluoride and all these all these other toxins uh, some you have a choice as to whether you put in your body you know do you drink that that red can or do you mm. you know scoff down cornflakes or do you you know eat something that's labeled on the side with a hundred e numbers that that those are, are choices you make um, a lot of choices we we I'd... we we can't make ourselves because they're yeah. forced on us like vaccines when you're a three-year-old or a one-year-old or whatever that's a toxin and the more toxins you put in your body the more your body will encapsulate those toxins and turn into things like tumors and uh, manifest themselves in what your doctor is going to tell you is cancer and in reality it is a toxin and the cancer is the symptom is the the body trying to deal with the overload of toxins in the body so you've got to get that toxins out out of there do you do you subscribe to the base acid um, assumption that equality is necessary to lean one way or the other to prevent it do you mean the pH sort of mm. Mm -hmm. 
I've done a lot of research on that and I've swayed from left to right from plus one to minus one. I don't know about the um, the um, pH stuff. So I, I, think, I just I think, think it's happens. logic. It's logical to me. I mean, I can say from my personal experience, John, that I worked way too hard and I did not live properly in the five years leading up to my cancer. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think, but that has a great deal to do with moderation and keeping some balances in check. So that's why I thought if you were a subscriber um, to what I asked. And also well, I'd like to add the other way is there's people that lived organic, haven't had toxins and have eaten extremely well their entire lives and, and still gotten it. So, so there's also an argument on that end. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. So that was two things. What What was the first one? Sorry. Oh. Okay. We'll do the uh, second one. Uh, people yeah. who uh, <laughs> who've it's, lived it. I mean, you've got late. people like um, uh, Andre Moritz. Do you, are you familiar with him? Mm -hmm. From Hawaii, who written, he wrote a lot of books, um, probably covering the pH level and everything as well. Um, there are those people that that think they're living a pure and beautiful life, but they don't test their water. They don't, you know, they they may be drinking from a street, uh, a spring or something, but that spring is contaminated from an aluminium factory up the up the road. You know, that's it's it's, it's just. You can you can you can eat the sweetest of foods, John, right? But if you're sour inside, that has a much bigger effect as well. Right, and no, and input is, is the... one thing. Well it is, but yeah, <laughs> getting late is the same thing. But it's also the truth, you know. No, I agree, you, 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 I agree. Sentiment. Yeah, there's the the way and your your intention. It comes from you, and well, it's and that like can have drinking a massive a impact on you. Glass There's a lot to that, to Adam. Intent. The glass of water. Yeah, intent. Oh, some would say that it might be a way to, you know, control the universe or have it to our advantage a little bit, right? Like what John was just nosing at with the water experiments, correct? Oh, yeah. I think I'm I'm I may not maybe getting that deep. I think I think if you have a positive outlook on life and the way you view life and the way you not not set not I'm not talking about people going well, feel, these sort of people go oh, I feel terrible and poorly all day. Do you know what I mean? But I'm talking about your your general demeanor on life and how you view things. I think that in of itself a must question reflect. for a pharmacist, Adam, but how do you feel fun. about um, placebos? Mm. Yeah, totally true. Mm -hmm. to totally, I, mean, I mean, a placebo massive. is probably one of the most powerful, um, you know, effective. It's true yeah, it's, to a degree. To a good degree, I would <laughs> say, John. It's, well, it's it just as... in what, but you, you see it in everything, even to the levels of some cancers you know this this story is everywhere anecdotal stories well, what about the kid with the father though who who whispers to his son that he can make that jump he gives him the placebo where the kid couldn't make it the jump into the water or couldn't dive and the father gives him the placebo verbally and the kid does it that works yeah. same principle right well it's just it's interesting it's to put it to a pharmacist you know, because well, the, the best way I can put it back to you is, you know, I, I deal with a lot of um, I have great pleasure is the wrong word, but great pride in trying to provide end of life services to people in community and making sure you know we do our bit in making sure it's 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 not less less painful as people pass, you know what I mean? And that requires modern modern drugs and it's a horrible thing. But you know, there's a lot of a lot of people as they get into the end who have been laying there on their arse, unable to do anything. 
yeah. have a day where they're able to speak and do and say goodbyes and suddenly overcome all yeah. the ailments that affected them. And I think that says a lot more about the power of the mind and spirit and how it is much more effective over the body than the body ever realizes. And we all live in a world where we're told everything about the body only affects spirit, that, that spirit is a reflection of the body. And that's the world we live in now, isn't it? Mm. But, but if you actually look at the end of people's lives, that has a, a contrary effect. Is the, is the reality that, and and, and the, at the end of people's lives is the denial of that reality, because you yeah. can't, unless you're Stephen Hawkins, of course. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah, I, have, I have someone extremely close to me going through that right now. Actually, um, the end of life and yeah. the treatment of, you know, morphine as a palliative, and all that. So. It's it's uh, I respect you tremendously with what you do. Um, it's a great service. It's honorable. It's very noble. And I wanted to say that um, there's a lot of wisdom to that little piece you started with, Adam, about uh, being kind and acting good in, in general in your life. I believe in a creator and I believe that we exceed when we live the way he wanted us to live. And that's kind and that's uh, simple and that's honorable. And I appreciate what you're doing. I agree with that, James. I don't think you go far wrong if you if you try and live by those standards. Good on you. Yeah. I'm not religious, but without getting religious, there's there's a there's a bloke who most people know his life. You don't have to believe in what the church tell you about him, but if you if you kind of try and do in situations what you think he might do, or be a good person. You don't even have to be him. You know, it, mm. just what a good person was that would do and take a second in situations to just absorb that before you... You know, and I used to get in fights a lot, you know? Is it not just common so, sense, it, though, Adam? Is it, I mean, it's... It, no, know, no, right? mate, that's not, that's not, no. It we, takes, we have time, John. With time is everybody else's enemy. You and I have time to look at these things and to leverage time and to know it's our friend. Yeah. They, they're affected by the game. I made um, that mistake. I mean, when, morals. You know, I mean, morals oh, you know, don't take so time. They, I mean, the, the morals is just, uh, to me anyway. Uh, just... Everybody's got morals. Everybody knows what they're doing is right or wrong. You know, when you watch Jeremy Kyle, and I, mm -hmm. I, <laughs> No. I fucked my brother's wife. He knew it was wrong. It's not because he's got less morals and he thinks that that was right to shag his brother's missus. Yeah? He mm. knew it was wrong. He just chose to take the carnal pleasure instead of being moral. The, the, Agree. Just the, because we know better doesn't we mean we know. do better. We don't. No, no. Yeah. yeah, and it's yeah. life's no, life no, to I, bit. I agree with that. That's it's not so much that we don't, you know. It's common sense to me, but then to me to live by that common sense, um, it requires me thinking that I don't know. Maybe I'm being judged, or maybe this is a game, or maybe you know the whole thing is a is a setup to test me. <laughs> So the actual moral side of it matters, but to a lot of people, the moral side doesn't matter at all because they're told that they're an infinite, random, yeah. accidental speck on a speck of yeah. a speck going around a speck. So, a so reductive, <laughs> so bloody reductive and yeah. hurtful when yeah. you think about it. And And that has a lot to answer for, I think. That, that's, that's the difference between someone, you know, thinking they have a responsibility to act as they're meant to and someone who thinks that they have no responsibility to do anything because none of it matters either way. I'm just a bubble in a pint glass. 
or I'll do better the next time around yeah. when I'm reincarnated. Absolutely, absolutely nail on the head. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the new age. Fuck me. Get me out of here. <laughs> so the idea <laughs> would be to try and persuade people. I, I've, that... I've read a lot of no, I've got to address that one, James. And maybe this is one for after show. But mm. I've read a lot of, lot of, lot of. When I when I first started, just becoming, just awake. Do you know what I mean? That's like started mm. doing religious stuff. Started be started looking at science. Me and my mates questioning space travel, just as mm. geeky stuff. Do you know what I mean? And and that. And one of the f- things I did look at was sort of. Uh, the the reincarnation stuff within the Bible, certainly within Old Testament statements such as, um, oh God, is it Isaiah that that who goes up the uh, Jacob forty two and Isaiah and mm. this certain this certain stuff and again, not for three o'clock in the morning mm. is in the UK. But something else I'd like, I'd li- like I say, you know, I, I think the Bible's a fan. I'm, I'm not a, a Christian in it, the the sense of, dude. Any, if any you're not a Christian form. and you don't look at the Bible and notice that it is absolute, like even if you don't believe, man, what it what the Bible tells you about human nature alone, like let's the, let's the, take Genesis. That's the for point example. I was going to make. Dude. The Bible is a fantastic source for. Anyone, whether they are religious, atheist, or anything, read what in it. There is fantastic wisdom in there. Whether you believe X, Y, Z doctrine or whatever, it's a fantastic document for you to be quiet to and let yourself. Whether that's God speaking to you, the Holy Spirit speaking to you, or just yourself, mm. if you're new age, you know, just read Maybe. it. And I think mm-hmm. it's a great book. I, I can say I don't subscribe to a doctrine, but I do think, and I, I, I also read other religious texts as well. You know? mm. Well, let me share this story with you, if you're right with it. It comes out of, out of Genesis, and it's one of the reasons why I subscribe to the Bible, even though, you know, a lot of people don't. But the author mm. of Genesis, whoever it is, had so much insight into who we are as people and what we do as people and let me break that down for you so genesis follows the story of adam and eve right and then you know the story the fruit and she gives it to his wife but what what's so astounding and interesting and and enriching about the story is what happens next because it, it it basically sets up all standards of human behavior because immediately what happens? The snake. Right? But God says to the man, who gave you this? And what does he say? He doesn't say, oh, I'm sorry. It was me. I did. I took it. He says, the woman. The woman. <laughs> and he blames her. And she says, oh, it wasn't me. I got deceived by the serpent. <laughs> so just in that very first story, whoever wrote that, knows something knows a hell of a lot about what we do when we're caught when we when we hide stuff what do we do we run what did they do they hid they hid so even then it shows what do we do as humans when we do something wrong well we hide and we lie and why do we do that because we're afraid so i don't See, care that, what the that, rest of the book says i'll read it just for that 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 story in itself to me says it's not a physical tale in terms of, because it's clearly allegorical in the sense that they ran and they hid from God. And God says to them, where are you? We are hiding from me. Now, he knows. Why, well, that's the point that I looked at. And, and, and certainly it's not implicated in the Bible that God knew. And, and, and there's stuff that when I read into that, I look at that story a lot more in an allegorical sense. Mm. As opposed to it being a literal event, necessarily. In 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 terms of that, a lot of important spiritual knowledge, and I'm getting spiritual here, but I, and I'm not. Mm. I'm not into anything. But in, important stuff is encoded in stories. 
Oh, what, what, I've what heard about and, that and you would, the, and I know you disagree with that because that that, that would affect. So no, not, not necessarily. No, I don't, <laughs> and and I believe that um, it, it's both, and it can be both, and I think you need to be open to the fact that it can be both things. Both allegorical in a way and also historical in the sense that um, the words are inspired from the creator. And if you look, oh man, this is maybe another off broadcast show, but there's a lot to the way the book is written um, in terms of segments, numbers, paragraphs, all that go, kind of go, stuff too. Go, go off broadcast because we've been on for stupid o'clock. I, I'm up yeah, here to... yeah, I was going to think that broadcast. too. I don't yeah, know. See you later, folks. Um, what what do we do? Ring back. Yeah, I'll just ring you guys on a on a call. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Cheers. Great show. Night. <laughs> Take it easy.